space, which is also really exciting. It's wonderful to be able to open it out for kids as well this year. So it's a whole new experience having it, you know, online, which we have not done before. So very excited to see how, how this all comes about. Um, so tonight we have the wonderful Jerry Fish, who's going to is kind enough to sit for us. Uh, what a wonderful face to be painting. Um, and then we also have Will Nathans, who was the winner from last year. So last year's event took place in, Car in, in Castletown House. And Will was the winner um, and painted a fabulous painting of David Norris on the night. So Will is going to paint and um, you might pick up some of his wonderful techniques if you are watching and learning. Um, and then, you know, take it, what I would suggest is take a freeze frame of the paint of, of Jerry. So the cameraman will actually allow for that in the very beginning. So if you can take a photograph of that and work from that image. Um, or just you know work alongside Will and do what he's doing and look at his palette and see how he's mixing his colours and all of that. So there's lots to be learnt and um, there's lots to be enjoyed. So um, I think that's pretty much all the information and I wish every single one of you the best of luck and the most important thing is enjoy every minute of it. Let us now ha know how you're getting on and um, yeah have fun. Thank you. Hi everyone, you're really welcome to this event, the Kildare Portrait Artist Competition of 2020. All of you are welcome, all of you painters that are going to enter the competition, all of you who are just going to watch along and those that are going to paint along and not actually enter the competition. So whatever feels right, go for it. So we'd love for you to enter your images in by midnight tonight and maybe even halfway through, send us a picture of your image and show us how you're getting on. So um, I'd like to thank the Kildare County Council um, and the, Art, the Arts Council and Lucina Russell for um, supporting this event in such a big way and also the Kildare Gallery out at Carton House with Ken and Ruth. We want to thank them for sponsoring the Children's Prize which is also really exciting. It's wonderful to be able to open it out for kids as well this year. So it's a whole new experience having it, you know, online, which we have not done before. So very excited to see how, how this all comes about. Um, so tonight we have the wonderful Jerry Fish, who's going to, is kind enough to sit for us. Uh, what a wonderful face to be painting. Um, and then we also have Will Nathans, who was the winner from last year. So last year's event took place in, Car in, in Castletown House. And Will was the winner um, and painted a fabulous painting of David Norris on the night. So Will is going to paint and um, you might pick up some of his wonderful techniques if you are watching and learning. Um, and then, you know, take it, what I would suggest is take a freeze frame of the paint of, of Jerry. So the cameraman will actually allow for that in the very beginning. So if you can take a photograph of that and work from that image. Um, or just you know work alongside Will and do what he's doing and look at his palette and see how he's mixing his colours and all of that. So there's lots to be learnt and um, there's lots to be enjoyed. So um, I think that's pretty much all the information and I wish every single one of you the best of luck and the most important thing is enjoy every minute of it. Let us now ha know how you're getting on and um, yeah have fun. Thank you. Hi everyone, you're really welcome to this event, the Kildare Portrait Artist Competition of 2020. All of you are welcome, all of you painters that are going to enter the competition, all of you who are just going to watch along and those that are going to paint along and not actually enter the competition. So whatever feels right, go for it. So we'd love for you to enter your images in by midnight tonight and maybe even halfway through, send us a picture of your image and show us how you're getting on. So um, I'd like to thank the Kildare County Council um, and the, Art, the Arts Council and Lucina Russell for um, supporting this event in such a big way and also the Kildare Gallery out at Carton House with Ken and Ruth. We want to thank them for sponsoring the Children's Prize which is also really exciting. It's wonderful to be able to open it out for kids as well this year. So it's a whole new experience having it, you know, online, which we have not done before. So very excited to see how, how this all comes about. Um, so tonight we have the wonderful Jerry Fish, who's going to, is kind enough to sit for us. Uh, what a wonderful face to be painting. Um, and then we also have Will Nathans, who was the winner from last year. So last year's event took place in, Car in, in Castletown House. And Will was the winner um, and painted a fabulous painting of David Norris on the night. So Will is going to paint and um, you might pick up some of his wonderful techniques if you are watching and learning. 
um, and then you know take it. What I would suggest is take a freeze frame of the paint of, of Jerry. So the cameraman will actually allow for that in the very beginning. So if you can take a photograph of that and work from that image, um, or just you know work alongside Will and do what he's doing and look at his palette and see how he's mixing his colors and all of that. So there's lots to be learned and. Um, there's lots to be enjoyed so um, I think that's pretty much all the information and I wish every single one of you the best of luck and the most important thing is enjoy every minute of it. Let us now ha know how you're getting on and um, yeah have fun, thank you. Hi everyone, you're really welcome to this event, the Kildare Portrait Artist Competition of 2020. All of you are welcome, all of you painters that are going to enter the competition, all of you who are just going to watch along and those that are going to paint along and not actually enter the competition. So whatever feels right, go for it. So we'd love for you to enter your images in by midnight tonight and maybe even halfway through, send us a picture of your image and show us how you're getting on. So um, I'd like to thank the Kildare County Council um, and the, Art, the Arts Council and Lucina Russell for um, supporting this event in such a big way and also the Kildare Gallery out at Carton House with Ken and Ruth. We want to thank them for sponsoring the Children's Prize which is also really exciting. It's wonderful to be able to open it out for kids as well this year. So it's a whole new experience having it you know online which we have not done before so very excited to see how, how this all comes about. Um, so tonight we have the wonderful Jerry Fish who's going to is kind enough to sit for us. Uh, what a wonderful face to be painting. Um, and then we also have Will Nathans who was the winner from last year. So last year's event took place in, Car in, in Castletown House and Will was the winner um, and painted a fabulous painting of David Norris on the night. So Will is going to paint and um, you might pick up some of his wonderful techniques if you are watching and learning. Um, and then, you know, take it, what I would suggest is take a freeze frame of the paint of, of Jerry. So the cameraman will actually allow for that in the very beginning. So if you can take a photograph of that and work from that image um, or just, you know, work alongside Will and do what he's doing and look at his palette and see how he's mixing his colors and all of that. So there's lots to be learned and um, there's lots to be enjoyed. So um, I think that's pretty much all the information and I wish every single one of you the best of luck and the most important thing is enjoy every minute of it. Let us now ha know how you're getting on and um, yeah, have fun. Thank you. Hi everyone, you're really welcome to this event, the Kildare Portrait Artist Competition of 2020. All of you are welcome, all of you painters that are going to enter the competition, all of you who are just going to watch along and those that are going to paint along and not actually enter the competition. So whatever feels right, go for it. So we'd love for you to enter your images in by midnight tonight and maybe even halfway through, send us a picture of your image and show us how you're getting on. So um, I'd like to thank the Kildare County Council um, and the, Art, the Arts Council, Lucina Russell, for um, supporting this event in such a big way. And also the Kildare Gallery out at Carton House with Ken and Ruth. We want to thank them for sponsoring the Children's Prize, which is also really exciting. It's wonderful to be able to open it out for kids as well this year. So it's a whole new experience having it you know, online, which we have not done before. So very exciting. So is it on now? Yep. Great. It's on now. All right. Hello, everybody. You're all very welcome to the uh, Kildare Portrait Competition. Uh, apologies for the delay. 
So uh, you're all very welcome. We're working here in Clare Hall. And um, uh, I'm Will Nathans. I'll be your porch guards tonight. And our special guest sitter is uh, Mr. Jerry Fish. So he's going to pose for me here. And he's going to give me, hopefully, uh, three hours or so. Apologies for the delay. And um, so I'm going to perform, or not perform, but to paint a live portrait demonstration in oil paint. And um, <clears throat> Jerry, will, there'll be a photograph of him so that you at home, uh, painting, can work away um, um, to do your own portraits. Uh, just also a shout out and a thank you to uh, the portrait, the Kildare um, Arts Council for hosting all of this. Um, to Claire Hall here in Dublin, uh, Mr. Barry, um, who's hosting us here. And also Jerry Fish of his time, he's given us his time to sit for me. And to the Kildare Gallery for uh, also hosting a special competition for children um, under the age of 15. So you're all very welcome. And we're really about ready to start. <clears throat> Basically, before we start, um, yeah, come on up, come on in. <laughs> First of all, it's great to meet you, man. And you. Hello. So, yeah, this is your throne here. Oh, perfect. And there's a bottle of water. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, right. just driven from Mount Glenster now where the, uh, the last wolf in Ireland lives. Or lived. Oh, really? Yeah, I think in 1758 they killed the last wolf, wolf of Ireland where they lived. Because yeah. there's a program on, I think it's on RT or something, that um, there's a guy in Donegal who started it. Um, bring back the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah cool. here you have one here. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I'm going to do your portrait. Thanks oh, so much. Okay. And uh, have you ever sat for your portrait before? I, I haven't sat. I've, um, I, I, I'm very lucky to have had my portrait done, but I've never sat for it. It's been like, okay. well, through a series of photographs. Okay, so it's your first time actually sitting for your portrait. To sit, yeah. Okay, so let's see if we can get it easy. <laughs> All right, great. So I'm going to paint you in oil, oil paint. Okay. So just to, for the folks at home, I'll just run down my list of colors real quick. Um, I'm just using titanium white, um, a cad yellow, a cad yellow deep, raw sienna. I've got three different reds. I've got a Venetian red, an Indian red, and um, a cad red. So these are all colors that I'm going to use to try to replicate the flesh tones. Okay. Uh, raw and burnt umber, and ultramarine blue. Um, a phthalo blue and ivory black, so it's quite an extensive color. So it gives me enough options to deal with um, the, the portrait here. So, okay, great. So, how far does it get into it? Oh, by the way, I'm just using linseed oil as a medium. I'm painting on uh, linen, oil prime linen. And uh, I got my brushes here. It's just uh, hog brushes and sable brushes. And that's it. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's, uh, I have to say, I love your beard. Thank you. I, yeah, you could just paint uh, George Bernard Shaw. <laughs> you're, you're, you're actually a lot like that. I'm turning into George Bernard That's the lockdown. That's what COVID has done to me. Did you grow it over COVID? I haven't shaved since March, basically. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Lockdown. In the it here. It's great. Well, and I love the blonde. The, uh, it's me. Yeah, it's changing. Well, I don't know what's happening over here, you know. <coughs> you usually use a bit of boot polish, but it's not happening. <coughs> All right, get my gear together here. All right, so are you, are you comfortable? Uh, I think so. Yeah, even if, you, if you're... You're going to go to, from the top of this. Yeah. Um, even if you want to sit back, if you want to really just relax. Yeah. Do you need another pillow at all? I'll get this now. You're okay? Good, yeah, thank you. There's a bottle of water there. So basically, um, I'm only going to do about 20 minutes and then Five, ten minutes, minutes, but whatever you can do, you know. Um, <clears throat> you tell me when you're as you know, when you're in the same position, obviously. Yeah, roughly, yeah. And even and feel free to talk and everything. And um, if you want to, you could look at me. You could look at anything you want. So before we start, uh, for the people at home who are going to actually paint you, so there's several people at home going to paint you. So what we might do is just spend um, just a few minutes uh, getting, uh, getting, yeah, get a still of a cherry and. Um, So you could totally relax, yeah. Okay, that's difficult for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
brilliant. All right, so we just we'll just hold this for I don't know, maybe two or three minutes that people could get. Now's your chance. So uh, you at home, any, everybody home, uh, if you'd like to take a photograph on your iPhone or a, a snapshot of uh, Jerry, here's your chance now to get a still of him. Just to say a thank you to Michael here, who's operating the camera and the sound and everything. I love your t-shirt, by the way. That's uh, fantastic. Yeah, somebody's looking after me. Yeah, that's brilliant. It's not. It's not really religious. It's more uh, the goddess. I think. I think oh, worshiping right, yeah. the goddess in the feminine form is a, oh, right, yeah. is a respected and good thing to do. Mm. The mammy. The mommy. Oh yeah, the she's uh, amazing. Yeah. All right. Just wait a few more minutes here. So how, how have you been enjoying COVID, lockdown and all that? Not enjoying it yeah. at all. No. Crazy, yeah. It's very difficult to um, first really plan a future, you know? Yeah. As a musician and an sure. artist. Sure, yeah. Um, and I run festivals, so it's, it's been a big, uh, difficult, difficult year, really. Mm. No, but you just have to count your blessings. Oh, and yeah. Take care of each other, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We all need the camera. Yeah. Everybody needs three days. Gosh, that's great. So hopefully uh, that's enough time for everybody. <coughs> okay, so I'll I'll just get into it now. So yeah, it, you could be totally chill. Yeah, yeah just relax. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. So it's just quick here. I'm just mixing Indian red and ivory black. It's a nice sort of warm tone. There's a lovely warmth coming off Jerry here. So, um, nice. <laughs> nice. Okay, great. Brilliant. Wow, you got this great, man, you're like a portrait painter's dream to paint. This Thank is, you. Uh, I hope I do you justice. Uh, this is thank you so much for for, for posing. This is like, uh, especially over COVID, because I can't, you know, you, you can't get anybody. It just, you know, it, it's all Zoom and everything. It's just not the yeah. same. Do you have a favorite artist? Painter artist that you look at or kind of admire? Or uh, yes, I would have several fa yeah. favorite painters. I'm a big fan of Francis Bacon. Oh yeah. Um, Van Gogh, of course. Oh yeah. And uh, no, I love art. Yeah. I actually used to. There's a confession very nearby here. I used to take a day off school every now and then. Oh yeah. Probably more frequently than I should have, and just go and sit uh, right opposite. Uh, Goya's El Sueno. Oh, gosh. The yeah. National Gallery there. Beautiful. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. And Sleeping Woman. So, like, uh, and I, I look at it now and I, I wonder what I was really is this fantasizing lady? about, you know? Is this the lady with the mantilla and she's just sort of posed with. Uh, no, she's, she's a, it's, a, it's a woman asleep. Oh, gosh. I can't. There's something very dreamy about it. El Sueno is the dream. El dreamy, Sueno. So. Oh, okay. Um, but it's something. And there would be right beside that portrait was a little one of. Which I found very amusing. I've never been able to find a little kind of portrait of the Christ sitting on a bench with three nails beside him. I thought it was quite humorous. Oh you know, it's a very old painting, wow, three brilliant. or four hundred years old. Gosh, yeah. I have to next time I'm in there. I can look for those. Yeah, I have to find that. I'd love to find that little one. Oh. Elsa Wendt was still in there. A Goya. And how long have you, um, I suppose you're, but how long have you been in involved in your music? How long have, have you been? Uh, I'm playing in, a, in bands, in rock and roll bands, probably nearly 40 years. Since oh, gosh, yeah. And then uh, I signed a record deal in 89. Wow. 
Who did you sign with? Yeah. Atlantic Records. Atlantic, gosh, that's huge. That's yeah, nice. so it was a very big record deal. Yeah. We toured the world for about five years. We made three albums at once and then disbanded. And I, then I returned. I took a bit of time out and then came back into as an independent artist about 20 years ago. Okay. So you've been on your own for the last 20 years? Yeah, for yeah. 18 years, since yeah. 2002. So do you think you get back together with the band, or do you think uh, uh, we have reformed um, uh, last year? Unfortunately, a drummer passed away a couple of years ago. I, so I read that. Yeah, March, yeah. yeah. That was t- 2017. I think so. Yeah. What is the camera you're using? Uh, it's actually it's a s- very basic uh, Panasonic Sony cam. I use it because of the very handy HDMI cable, and it it's very easy on the battery. Okay. So you can go. I use the power bank. Yes. And you can go eight hours with the power bank. So yeah, because I, I think we'll all be buying one of them cameras now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Something. Uh, <coughs> It's all d- up to what you want, like what's the final result, how mm. you're going to be plugging it in. Because now at the, m- the problem is you can get decent cameras, but they're connecting it to the computer. It's the tricky part. Mm. Um, there are ways you can get, like depending what you want to do, you can get away with a decent mm, webcam, like an actual webcam. Okay. Like you would use for Zoom and stuff. And that would do the job. Now at the moment they're quite quite okay. You can get a good one for about 200 to 250 euro. Okay. Yeah. But you can also get a camera like something like this for about 200 300. And it's it's the the camera is not the problem. All the additional equipment is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like this little box is 900 euro. Yeah, right. So it's it's the way it in. Yeah. Up to. I have a barn at home that I want to turn into a small theatre. Oh wow! And maybe yeah. kind of perform from the safety of my mountain. Wow! Uh, you, you could put on a concert, then, uh, kind yeah. of small one. Yeah, do a TV show. Oh gosh, brilliant! It's like work a lot with circus people, you know. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's a, a show I would like to do. I haven't seen yet, so. And w- what what would be the premise of the, of the show? I, I, I think just representing the fringe, you know, people what people do kind of. Even I'd love to have a section just interviewing ordinary people. Oh yeah. Like how interesting life is, just mm-hmm. being nobody. Or locals. Yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. even even something that's kind of anti-celebrity culture, you know. Mm. I remember Circus Soleil. You know, if, if I love Circus Soleil. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. Which is kind of like, this is the kind of things we're talking about now. Is mm. um, you know, how the French funding in Montreal kind of, you know, the guy who started Circus Soleil was a busker, you know. Oh, okay. So he got a yeah. lot of funding from his government and support. Okay. Which I kind of think we need more of now in Ireland, you know. Right. For the arts, sir. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, and not just for the, but for modern arts, I think, you know, mm. for, for popular culture. Yeah. What happens to the performers, like, when they leave, when they're done? I can imagine it's, like, taxing on their bodies, but, like, what what happens? Yeah, I mean, it is very addictive performing, I think. But the uh, the Circus Soleil people? Oh, I think they're constantly working. They're constantly working, yeah. Yeah, wow. and because yeah. it's physical, they <laughs> you okay? Do you need a little break? No, All right, great. Yeah. Good company, good conversation. Great. I'm just 
just getting the highlight on your uh, forehead there. This is a lovely area. Isn't it? <coughs> I heard something really interesting when I came in here. It was the Samuel Beckett. This this building was um, Beckett's father's okay. uh, surveyor company here. It was at Beckett when he was studying at Trinity. He used to live up in the uh, garret. And Oscar Wilde was born down just yeah. a few doors down. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I mean, it's a very old, beautiful old part of Dublin. Yeah. Yeah. It was a national gallery. Where, where are you from in Dublin? Where's home? Ringsend. Oh, Ringsend, okay. And I've kind of, um, I grew up in South London, so I'm very interested in where I'm from. Yeah. Uh, but all my family are from Ringsend. But, but I've last, a couple of years ago, I did a theatre piece about the history of Dublin and kind of like a time traveller kind of show. Oh, okay. And yeah. there was a beach. There was a beach just there in Merriam Square. Get out of here. The river, the river was very wide and wow. much of Dublin was reclaimed. Wait, the beach from the Liffey kind of? The Liffey it? would have been a wide kind of slob land and only kind of, it could only be navigated by people from Ring's End. Holy moly. Wow. Yeah. Swamp. <laughs> There's an old mill, I think, in Ring's End. It's still like. Yeah, Bowland. Yeah. So probably on the canal. That is beautiful, yeah. that old mill. Yeah. Gosh. Wow. Ring's End was a little hook uh, in the peninsula, is what I call it. It was a, like the tongue in the River Liffey, you know. So oh, oh, okay. So right. you had to kind of. Someone would row out to you from Ring's End and then navigate you up the river. Ah, I got you. Where are you from yourself? I'm from the States. <coughs> I'm American. Where? Uh, in New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I've been I've met my wife here I said back in two thousand ten, so but I've been permanently here since twenty thirteen. Right. So um yeah. New Jersey's good. I've Jersey, I've yeah. toured a lot in America, so Yeah, okay, yeah. You know, I've, I've played Hoboken. Oh have yeah, were you really? Places, yeah. That's Blue Eyes is neighborhood, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Sinatra, yeah. Hoboken is a great place, isn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. a very vibey, yeah. And 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 we played. Um, oh, oh, what's the name of that place? Stone Pony. What is Stone that again? Stone Pony. It's yes. uh, where Bruce Springsteen is from. Okay, and, yeah, that uh, would be Jersey. The yeah. guys uh, from. Uh, oh, I can't think of their names at the moment. I'm trying to think of the name of the area. It's a, it was a big boardwalk. Is it, uh, yeah, is it a um, Atlantic City or Jersey Shore? I should know. No, I try, I'll, I'll hopefully get it now within yeah. a couple of hours. <laughs> wow, yeah, I wonder now. Wow. Massive boardwalk built in the 40s and 50s or something, and now right. it's empty. Right, it's not Atlantic City or down there? No, it's not Atlantic City because it's in Jersey. It's, it's Bon Jovi is from there. Oh, Bon Jovi, okay. Yeah. So that makes a difference. Right. Don't know now. Yeah. I should know more. Wow. You should know, yeah. You should know. <laughs> <coughs> I, I'm, I'm racking my brains, but you should know. <laughs> right. Good. I'm just getting your, the, your, the hair and your beard now. Ah, there's a lovely colour kind of happening there's there. There's a lot yeah. going on, yeah. yeah. River Rainbow, the ginger. So you, you said you grew up in London, but you I were grew up in South dead. London, yeah. Okay, because you've you got such a Dublin accent. Yeah. We weren't allowed to have any other kind of accents. You know, when I actually, if it were Dublin or it, they would hear the, they would hear the London, you know. Wow. Yeah. So, so dubs can hear your English? I think so, okay. yeah. Wow. Okay, wow, that's great. <laughs> Chaplin, Charlie Chaplin was from where I'm from in oh, okay. South London, that right. kind of <coughs> William Blake and, and Dick, Charles Dickens. Oh, right. So a lot of the characters in Dickens' book were, were kind of written about. Right, yeah, all oh, right. Characters. What's that wharf? Um, Mary Wharf. I can't, no, what's the wharf there? Um, I forget now, but anyway, yeah. Yeah, it's great brains we have. Billingsgate would be kind right. of South London. Wow. 
And do you, would you go back? No, yeah. I haven't been back in a long time. Wow. Good f- well, we've become good friends, but I had my poetry take uh, done by Rasha, an artist called Rasha. Oh, yeah, he's brilliant. Yeah, yeah he's, he's very good. He did yeah. a wonderful uh, portrait of me. Wow, yeah. Which kind of is a bit kind of schizophrenic. Oh, know? really? I yeah. He's got a lot of my character as, <laughs> as a performer and as a person, but, but that was only last year, so. Oh, right. Is it uh, on the wall somewhere? Is it a. I d- I d- I d- I think he may have sold it, I'm not yeah. sure. It's a big, um, very big painting. Wow. Be almost life size. Brilliant. Wow. Right. Rash is a great guy, yeah. Is he? Yeah. Oh, he's Gosh, great. his work is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. And he's from Dublin, isn't he? He's yeah, I think Wicklow, Dublin, yeah. Okay. His wife is also a fantastic artist. Was oh, she an artist as well? Yeah. Wow. Sharon, they're asking me. Uh, okay, just sorry, just a few questions here. Um, okay. Uh, someone's asking your brushes. Are you using? Uh, okay, so brushes are they're hog hair brushes, um, pig hair. So they're good bristle brushes. That's really what I use. I mean, good old. That's an Irish make there, Richard Oliver. But it's it's a great brush. I like that brush. So that's it. Just hog hair. And, um, yeah. <coughs> Colors, I love the, the coat there, the pattern. Yeah, I thought I'd give you give you a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Succeeded. <laughs> <There's some passions laughs> in there. Color, you want? Yeah, you let me know when you'd like to just take a bit, a bit no, of a break. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good. Yeah. I mean, you can roll in and take a car back. I can too. All yeah. right. Okay. I was 10 cents short in the car park, but luckily I met a lovely old Dublin lady who gave me <laughs> 10 cents. I pay with the cash because I knew I need to yeah. put it to the law, but yeah, I nobody has cash these days. Nobody yeah. has yeah. coins. Yeah. I think we'd be okay, I think 7 o'clock we're going to stop, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so maybe a uh, short break and we'll be back. I even prepared a small spoon, so we'll be back soon. Yeah. Okay, great. Where did you end up parking? Where is it? Not, not far. Not far, okay. No, yeah, Street. that's good. I was born up the road here yes. in Hollow Street. Oh, in Hollow Street, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Many, many of us were. Wow. And all my children were born here too. Oh, okay. How many kids do you have? Four. Four, wow. Four kids, yeah. And who's the, how old is the oldest? At 19. She's oh, just wow. moved to Dublin to go to college, so oh, it's okay. a strange year for me. Wow. What, 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 what does she want to pursue? Art, she's got oh, to NCAD. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, she's, a, she's a great artist. She's brilliant. Yeah. We have a lot of art in, in the house, and my wife is a great artist too. Is she? Yeah. yeah. And do you paint at all? Did you? I, I, you know, I, I, I did when I was younger, musicians. but um, yeah, it's something I should pursue. Yeah, yeah. A lot of musicians are painters. So yeah, I think I, I'd yeah. imagine it's very therapeutic. Yeah. On a good day, yeah. <laughs> yeah, even on so a bad yeah, day. It's you know. the feel of the paint and everything. Yeah. I think uh, there's a wonderful movie I saw recently uh, about Lowry. I think it was oh about yeah, Lowry and his yes. mother. Right, yeah. I did miss it, but it, Very, it was uh, a good. Yeah, it's worth looking at. I think it's on Netflix. Oh, on okay. Netflix, I think. But it's... Um, he's... You know, she... she, she Nice, really. The wife, really. The mum. Oh, oh, the mum. Lived with his mother. Oh, right. That's right. He never married. In his yeah. attic, and right. uh, she didn't really think much of his work. His you know. Wow. I think he was a rent collector. That's right. He went door to door. Yeah. Mm. After his father had took over his father's uh, trade, so it was quite. Ah, okay. It's sad, really. Wow. But he was only recognised after she died because she. She, she just didn't rate him. It's very sad. He's a 
really good, um, very good movie. Wow, I'll check it out. Yeah. Sometimes artist films can be kind of strange, but uh, that was a good one. No, yeah, bit. Okay. you sure? Yeah. yeah, as long as you're comfortable, that's great. Okay, I'm a bit of a I'm sorry. No, no, don't worry. <coughs> you're comfy, yeah? Yeah. Right. yeah hey, who would be your favorite artist? Oh, uh, gosh, I love, um, I like, um, uh, this uh, this Velasquez, the Spanish painter mm, Velasquez. Of course, yeah. Well, he would be the inspiration for Bacon, wasn't he? he was yeah, he was with the Pope's portrait. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, yeah. 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 Big, big <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can, you can pass, pass for Velasquez. Yeah. 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 But um, it's this some brilliant uh, Irish painters and some things here. Phenomenal. Um, yeah, the Grocky. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, I think this whole COVID thing has got me from thinking more about artists around all Yes. Yeah. Has it been productive for you, just in, in terms of your no. own? No, <laughs> that's itself. Music making? Or um, no, no, it didn't get out. Not yet. yet. So, so, you know, no, it's it coming. coming. Mm -hmm. Mostly commission. Um, I, I, I have a few exhibit, no, an exhibition in a year or so. Um, but, um, this year was, yeah, another story, but uh, the commission is quite, I got a portrait commission or one or two or so, that would be. Yeah. And then I teach a lot, I do a lot of teaching. Uh, last, last few months, months last, last month or so has been pretty good. Things, things are pick picking up, up again, so yeah. hopefully now this thing doesn't. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I have to kind of uh, see it Yeah. During that time, he possibly went to Italy and 
mentions of Venice, Venice and Romeo and Juliet. So. I can't say this is about using your time. time. That's, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. How you use your time. Yeah. Yeah. Make, make it productive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely it. Yeah. That's how you look at things, you know. See it as, as an opportunity or yeah, something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. 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 And you have a place at home, almost like a small, a quiet place to kind of. I have a quiet place. Yeah. Right. Would you do that regularly? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I guess. All over the place. Yeah. A lot of the time, I don't know what you're during the festivals, it's a very good one for me. It's a lot of physical work. Right. right. I do a little stay. Oh, wow. okay. So I enjoy the physical work. I kind of enjoy physical work. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. They say artists, artists usually have a, uh, some, some other things to keep them kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of so the festivals really work like right for me. Right. 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 Oh, yeah. It's a gypsy song. Well, they say all Irish people do. They say if you go to Ireland, and this is the story we say, if you before go and visit, there's just this one point the real real roamed around with their cattle or wherever else, and. Uh, until she said, no, you can't do that, you know, and built little walls and made everybody move into towns and villages and pay tax, basically. Right. So, so every Irish person that's gypsy, a gypsy is gypsy, yeah. If, if you look at it that way. That's something, wow. You know, Crazy. I think, and then she decreed that they should be um, run out, basically, and they should be kind of and so I think we're kind of still living with that kind of racist stigma, you know? Sure, yeah, right. I think you look at history, it explains a lot of things, you know? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Gosh. Propaganda and laws. Yeah. yeah. Since I've been here, I, I'm amazed at the I, Irish history. It's a bloody history, isn't it? I mean, it's really... Well, there's, no, there's no such thing as a history that's not bloody. Yeah, it's, it's true, just, it's yeah. It's history. No. Yeah. As um, I like to always say that we don't have rights, we have privilege. Mm. Well, that's true mm. in this this part of the world for sure. Mm. But privileges come from rights, I guess. You know, you've got to stand up. That's what Mary said. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It's the we we're getting all political now, but it's it's the problem is with democracy itself because it's the tyranny of the majority mm. in the end uh, for example like I think we sh we should think about getting a bread sure soon because uh, people oh yeah off. you're hungry you probably <laughs> no whenever, whenever sure, you yeah. feel whenever you feel yeah pizza from the park anyway okay yeah, yeah, and, and, and Michael help yourself just we have some pizza delivered yeah. so uh, <laughs> we're we'll back in an hour we're gonna <laughs> eat we're gonna eat in front of you. <laughs> I'll just do a few more bits and then, uh, yeah, well, I just yeah, talk exactly. about the painting. No, you get yeah, your, okay. Um, yeah, you get just say, I'm, I'm just, I'm kind of, you can see this. Can you see this, Jerry? No, the mic is in the way, but I, oh, right. it's grand. It's good. Okay. Good. I've just been laying in, uh, 
basic flush tones of Jerry just to get a structure and it's all very loose very soft and now I'm just trying to hone in on uh, on the um, the particulars so I suppose this would be a normal kind of way I'd work uh, I just love the banter and um, I'm tr even though I'm trying to paint and focus and it helps me to understand who you are you know mm -hmm. like even your mannerisms the way you're talking and everything so yeah it's all kind of being filtered through and uh, so because um, I know some artists they can't work at all unless you know I don't know you're still or silent or something but yeah. sometimes it's good to just once you capture the mischief that's, that's it yeah that's mm -hmm. hopefully now <coughs> get you, do you justice here but, oh. yeah. now there's no justice <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's um I, I have a here's a before we do take a break here's a mm. thought to ponder okay I my I have a I have a great beautiful son called Sam yeah. and uh you know, I'm usually flustered and running around the place, you know, I'm mm. always late. I just said, oh, my apologies to everybody. No, 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 sure. But um, he said to me, uh, you can't see yourself, Dad. One day, he was only about four years old, you can't see yourself, Dad. And I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? I can't see myself. He says, you can't see yourself. You can see your arms and your legs, but you can't see yourself, you know. That's what he said. Unless you, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's so... At four years old. Four, yeah, but it was just so... I mean that's it, isn't profound, it? Without yeah. a mirror, we don't, we can't see ourselves. We don't know yeah. who we are, really. Wow, he's a you he's know, a boxer, but, isn't he? but I guess we look for ourselves in each other. Yeah, that's you know? true. Yeah, and I think that's uh, no, we're really kind of it's very, very deep, very profound. Yeah. Wow. And the idea is that there's two of us. Two of us. Yeah. You need a double there. somewhere. There's two of Jerry, oh, there's two right. of Michael, and okay. there's two of Will. God help me, this is two of me. <laughs> there okay. is your physical appearance, your avatar, yeah. and the driver. And the driver. Who calls himself Jerry. Yeah, the soul. Mm. The well, the soul, absolutely, I agree. But, but, yeah, but, but I mean, I don't think you're ever really that comfortable with your image. You know, look at, look at the amount of kind of people are. People are. And it's also a lot of pressure from, we actually were talking about it before. You came in. There is um, a, a, the, the culture that we live in now at the moment is the one upping everybody else and trying to be. There is a conversation that I always have with someone in, in, in terms of social media. Let's say when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, a girls were upset when someone read their diary. Mm. Now girls are upset now no one reads their read diary. The diary. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know they're having massive problems with filters on. Yeah. Kids then want to have surgery to be like the filter. Oh, right. Yeah. Anyway, we won't go there. Yeah. That's, that's a it's, it's mad. It's a horrible it? avenue. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like it. Yeah. Sure. It's the world we live in now, isn't it? Well, it, it, it's, it's actually a wonderful movie or documentary on at the moment about the guys who created Facebook and, and uh, um, the social, social disorder. The social dilemma. Social dilemma, yeah. Okay. And it's, um, you know, they created these with positivity in mind but it's not how they're being used and now that there's basically artificial intelligence running the whole thing and it's 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 causing massive that they, they're worried about it because it you're being the end of democracy because, because you're, you're being shown only yeah. what you like what what you what you identify with yeah which is polarizing society oh, and we see I it everywhere you know yeah but when you think about it it's um, so they have to re Re design society. They have to re no, not not society. They have to redesign these algorithms and these computers. That they they they've made the biggest amount of money that's ever been made in history. Ever. So there's ever in the, in the history of the world. Yeah. So and it was made on our expense. Well, yeah, we're buying. We're, we're buying. It's it. actually w w it's our data is is the new gold. Exactly. Right? It's not that we're buying. It's that we are. We're merchandise. Yeah, we are. We mm. are the. Uh, yeah, it's we are the merchandise. So it doesn't really work. You know, uh, you know for instance, when you ever um, log into email or you were sending a message to a website and they ask you to do a captcha, you know, to recognize. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, Click yeah. on the um, street sign. Yeah. Just click on Make that. sure you're not a robot. Yes. Oh, I yeah. always want to say I am a robot. <laughs> this is actually. How? <laughs> that, that tool was the, the invented by Google to teach artificial intelligence. Right. So everybody who's using the the captcha 
it's actually feeding information to artificial intelligence. So they're saying artificial intelligence won't kill us, but we'll kill ourselves because of artificial intelligence. That's 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 the concern. There I is mean, we are forgetting very deep now. <laughs> there is actually the um, the research in terms of an artificial intelligence and machine learning because we need to differentiate between the different terms because we might have an artificial intelligence which will be a, a sentient machine mm. which is a very popular subject now at the moment or we could have a machine learning which would be a, a, an algorithm which will learn yeah that's what's happening the al algorithms yeah mm. yeah so and I it's think learning from our behavior basically but only but only our individual behavior not not for the good of mankind uh, th that, that's the thing the question is like we're running so far ahead of ourselves in all aspects that the only thing that can save us is artificial intelligence which will take over decision making process because there is too much involved oh my god <laughs> <laughs> well on that note <laughs> <laughs> anyway I'm using a bit of cad yellow here and all the <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Back to the painting. No, but it is mad. I mean, but if you think about things, just in the world in general, like the world has gotten so much smaller, you know, and how quickly communication can kind of get to people. And I mean, it's just so. Yeah, I, I suppose there's going to be a, a a turning of of the corner. You know? Yeah, I guess the big problem is though that we're kind of polarized. You know. Yeah. And there is no gray area. We're not seeing. I mean, even in the music business, we used to have a program here called Top of the Pops, which I'm sure oh, yeah. people I heard of that. Yeah. And you would maybe go, you know, I was a big T Rex fan, so you'd know that T Rex were going to be on Top of the Pops. But you'd have to sit through another 20 acts that maybe you weren't a fan of. Yeah. And then you might find something else that you like. Become yeah. a fan. Most of it you wouldn't enjoy. Yeah. But, you know, you're just waiting for your act. But the point is you're getting a flavor of everything. Right. That no longer happens. It's just now it's genre driven. Yeah. And it, it, you, you just get what you like all the time. So th th that's a problem. Mm. Do you know? It's the access to the information. We were thinking that our problem with advancing mm. was lack of access to the information. Lack, okay. Yeah. But it's, it's too much information. But it's too much information. And we are <laughs> marinating in dopamine. Yeah. Like Marinating in dopamine, there is an like like that. Marinating in dopamine, that <laughs> sounds good. It's yeah. a name for a band. Yeah, marinating uh -huh. in dopamine. A bit long. Um, what do you call it? MID. <laughs> That's the thing, and we we it's the the, the immediate gratification mm. that that it's it's turning us into monkeys. Is actually bringing us back so far in our revolution. I mean, that, that's a very inter It's a great film if you see the social dilemma. I don't know if you've seen I've it. I've seen it. I've because seen it. Yeah, yeah. And that, and that was fascinating. That the evolution of the technology is has gone. Yeah, it's everywhere whereas, now. Whereas yeah. The evolution <coughs> of mankind yeah. is not speeding up. It's we're not we're not that quick. But we stopped evolving a long time ago. Yeah, but we're, lo we're losing some senses. I don't know. I mean, even this current pandemic is is kind of us switching over to farming, you know, from from hunter gatherer, you know. So, okay. Twelve thirty. Yeah. Okay, so we take a break. Let's take a break. All right, great. We'll be right back, everybody, after these messages. <laughs> great. You. So you have a.
<laughs> you found yourself a little uh, a little uh, little business. I think you did in your studio in the back. Yeah, we yeah, have done. Yeah, I love to get painters down. <laughs> We're live. Okay, welcome back, everybody. So um, we'll ask Jerry a question here. Um, how did you? What, what was your first album, and how did what what led you to write your first album? The, the first record uh, was it was I was in a band called Emotional Fish. <coughs> um, so we we we, uh, we were signed to Atlantic Records, and we made we made that record in Wimmel Lane in Dublin here um, wow. with a producer called Tim Palmer. Um, yeah, I mean it was a quite a long time ago, 1989. We wow. made the record was released in 1990, and probably the most famous song is Celebrate. Celebrate, which is still being played, and that was covered by an, an Italian singer, Pasco Rossi. Pasco Rossi, I platinum, I think, ten times over or something. He he, he rewarded the. Um, song to be an anti-mafia -ma lyric an anti-mafia anti-mafia yeah. and it was uh just shortly after the falcone bombing in in naples or something so it, so it had a lot of public uh oh, massive right. public reception so it's a, it's a huge song in italy celebrate wow then we went on to do a couple more albums toured the world you know so wow yeah so then then i dropped out So you got fed up with the group? Yeah, I got, well I got, the touring was tiring, I know I love to travel, mm. um, but also um, just we, we, we got in kind of, we a lot of legal issues and we ended up kind of like um, uh, being caught with a record label, so it kind of all became a bit boring and a bit tiresome, so we okay. kind of uh, split up then, and then I dropped out of music. Did you entirely? Yeah, pretty much. I kind of I, I got into restoring old motorcycles and just oh, wow. touring around. Yeah. Yeah. What still kind of motorcycle? Still travel. I had a 1946 Triumph Speed Twin, oh, wow. which I restored. Um, then I, I, I but I, I mostly travelled around on the Tiger Cup, which was a 200 cc 1960s Lander bike, and I, I took it all over Ireland. You know. Oh wow. It sounded really loud and bad, but it was like. It didn't go very fast, really. Um, yeah, and then I got back into music. My child was, uh, my first child was born, Ella. She's 19 years old now. And I just looked at her and thought, I don't really want to tell her. I used to be a rock star, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I kind of made another record and, and, and formed a band called Jerry Fish and the Mudbug Club. Mm. And we had a hit with that. And... Um, yeah, the rest is history. Then, then, then I guess with with the Jerry Fish and the Mudbug Club kind of became an entity of its own. Decided I need to change that, and I formed a circus. You know, so I've got now I've got the Jerry Fish Electric Sideshow. So now I've got a circus, which is out of work. So the next move is about to happen. You know, Isn't that something? Who knows? Wow. So are you a, a circus performer? Like, would you do acrobatics or what? Or no, the, uh, not really. I'm a clown. Your, like, okay, a clown. yeah. I'm from a long line of clowns. <laughs> I'm the first to realize it, basically. Yeah. Amazing. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah, I mean, I I do a lot of theatre shows now mm. as well as big festival shows. Um, yeah, and I love what I do. You know. Oh, you might find this interesting, but my great great grandfather. Let's see, my great great. Grandfather worked with P.T. Barnum. Wow! Yeah, he was he was in the circus. He was a um, he was the first, or so we were told in the family. He um, stood up on the horses, one foot on each horse, and kind of did that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it basically a circus started was horse tricks. Okay, yeah, and that's why the size of a circus ring. It's a ring. Oh, is, right. is how is this a that's why that a horse can turn around it? Okay, very good. So that's, wow. that's 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 where the circus started. That's yeah. Funny. Yeah. In London. Oh, in London. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I'm fascinated by circus. Wow. And circus people and circus mm. performers. Yeah, and, sure. You know, I think Yeats uh, painted a famous uh, clown called Patterson. He was an amazing singer. Wow. I think he died from some audience member threw a bottle or something, hit him in the head or something Jeez, like that. Gosh. But there's a famous Yeats painting of, of this guy. Wow. Patterson, I think his name was. Wow, 
Mm. But I mean, clowns were like, you know, kind of now that they're, they're smaller, but I think the guy who said, the, 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 you know, the US wants you, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, he, he was a clown. That's right. And I think he, he earned more money than Lincoln at the time, you know, so. Get out of here. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so uh, I, I just love clowning, I think. It's, it's quite an admirable mm. profession. Sounds yeah, strange. Well, the French are kind of the mimes, that's all part mm. of it, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's an art itself. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's an art. I think P.T. Barnum's wife was called Nancy Fish. Oh, get out of here. There we go. I guess. Wow. <laughs> Uh, well, it's funny because uh, my ancestor who uh, rode on the horse, his wife was, she did the same but in England. Her name was Lucy Watson. And okay. so they. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah, so uh, it's funny. But you know, the, what I find interesting is the whole idea of a circus now, it almost seems um, kind of, uh, what's the word? Poo pooed or, or uh, because of the animals and cruelty. Yeah, well, they're gone now. I mean, it's. That, you know, in a way, that was almost what made the circus so wonderful because he had the animals, he had. And the, yeah, and I do remember as a kid yeah. seeing, say, you know, lion tamers and stuff like that, but it's wrong, you know. Right. And it's, it's good that it's gone. I think Cirque du Soleil <coughs> and people, mm. you know, is it, it, a wonderful way to, you know. Have the best of. Yeah. yeah best of what the people can do. Yeah. I think we made big mistakes as a as a race, really, with animals. To mm. be treated animals, really, still do. Mm. Do you have any animals at all? Like, have you ever worked with like horses? I, 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 I don't. I don't actually believe in pets, but my oh, kids right. do. And my wife does. <laughs> so we we were like, uh, we do. We have a little Shih Tzu. Um, what is it Shih Tzu? Shih Tzu and. Oh, I'm going to be in trouble now. Shih Tzu <laughs> and, uh, what's the other? Bichon. Oh, Bichon. Bichon yeah. and a Shih Tzu mix. Okay. And, the, and, and, the, and I think the Shih Tzu were like, um, temple. They were for the Buddhist monks to guard the temples. Now, they're only a tiny little thing, but they... Get out of here, I really? Guess the Buddh I guess the monks knew Kung Fu, so they all they <laughs> needed was the bark, you know? <laughs> And then uh, that's why those little dogs are such a <laughs> yeah the Bichon have great complex. history the yeah. Bichon I love their history because they were originally lap dogs for the the women travelling in the coaches they would keep you warm you know oh, if you're travelling right. overnight in a yeah. coach or on a long journey in a coach wow. and then during the French Revolution when the when the aristocracy were all the, faced the guillotine um, the, you know the dogs these dogs became street dogs and then became the circus performing dogs, you know, because they're great on the oh, hind legs right. and stuff. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do love the Bichon's history. Right. <clears throat> Survivor. They, yeah, honey, honey booers. That's her name. That's yeah. my wife calls her, yeah. And then three cats we have. I like, I don't mind cats because... Yeah, right. Do you have any sheep or chickens? Or I, don't, I don't have sheep or no. chickens, no. No, I don't. I'm surrounded by them. Okay. Not yeah. chickens, but sheep. I live... A lot of wildlife. Mm. Okay. What was any other questions that was asked? Of, uh, there was a question Sharon. for you. Will, what's your technique? What's your process? Where did you study? How did you come to where you are? Okay. I, I studied in New York, and um, initially I was kind of working to doing comic comic book art, uh, and then I discovered painting. And once I discovered painting, I just kind of thought pursue that. So. Uh, uh, I did four years at the School of Visual Arts, um, which was a kind of a school where <coughs> it was you, you, you had to be a working artist to teach there. So if you weren't a working artist, you couldn't teach. So that was kind of cool because you met these people. Mm. So, uh, in fact, they were making a living making from living, it. Yeah. yeah. In fact, the guy who worked on The Flash was one of my teachers, the, uh, you know, okay, the comic book yeah. character, The Flash. Yeah, yeah, I'm a massive fan of cartoons. Oh, yeah. Books. yeah. Some of it's very, yeah, okay. Well, amazing. Dublin is a great city for animation. It is, yeah, yeah huge. Brown bike films, yeah, yeah amazing. Oh, well, yeah. The guys are great. They have two friends of mine, actually, for, for a very long time. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're not the guys that, no, they didn't, The Secret of Kells, is that them? Or? No, that, that's another great crowd from Kilkenny. Okay, yeah. Um, Cartoon Saloon. Cartoon Saloon, right. Yeah, with a massive... Uh, 
represent mm. animation. Yeah, yeah the brilliant world. here with the animation. I think it's art as well, isn't it? You know. It's, it, you know what it is? It's storytelling. That's what yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I think you guys are like the top. Like story, you, you're all storytellers. That's my funny. You, you know, people have always asked me, why do they think the Irish are so kind of like... Um, it's the storytellers. All storytellers, yeah. all singers, all, all, all artists and musicians mm. and stuff. But, but I mean, the, the best reason I've heard is that if you were a king in Ireland, you couldn't be like... No one could be wittier than you. You couldn't be like nobody was wittier than the king. It wasn't a birthright. Right. Okay. You, know, you had to yeah, be yeah. the king. Okay. So everybody was having a go. You know, we had hundreds of kings. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so everybody had, you know, I was trying to be the king basically, or the queen. You know, mm -hmm. you couldn't outwit or outsmart the king or the queen. You know. Uh, right. Yeah. Probably had too many kings, none of queens, probably. You know. Um, okay, so just the, the technique was the other question. Yeah. So, so I'm just using oil, and uh, just trying to match Jerry's flesh tones here. Um, I'm, I'm zoomed in on Jerry, so people can. Okay. Oh yeah, if we take a few minutes to kind of. Yeah, yeah. People will ask for yeah. some extra close-ups. You ready for your close-ups? <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Who? I don't know. Oh. It's a very famous one, isn't it? I'm ready for my close-up. Have you ever done your ancestry? Have you ever done that? Uh, <coughs> not, not specifically. To find out where you're. Where oh, you're I have. I've done the DNA. Oh, have you? Yeah. Yeah, uh, and I'm from Ireland. So you're 100 percent Irish. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> Ireland, Wales, and Scotland. Oh, okay. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. Wow. I actually got updated yesterday. I had one. I had one percent Danish, and I was, because I don't know how, being from Dublin. I don't have an English man in there or, or, or a Viking. You know? I mean, you look like a Viking. You look like uh, Ragnar. I, yeah, I mean, right. not, I mean that in the way that you... Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, no. Wow. It's, it's a pure paddy. Isn't that something? Wow, amazing. Um, but I know my family are all for, for many centuries from the same fishing village in Dublin, Rings End. Wow. Gosh. So they're mostly kind of dockers, fishermen, mm. you know, sailors. Um, and bottle blowers, there's, there's a glass industry as well in Ring's End. Oh, right, yeah. So, and and, and uh, a lot of service people who serviced big, big grand houses like this, we did the cleaning. Oh, okay. We did a little dust out. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Where did your ancestors... And the apron. <laughs> well, look, that's, you know... You need someone to do that too. That's the honest, you know, honest work, you know. That's yeah, people the revolution. <laughs> Were, were any of your ancestors in any of the, in the big British wars, or did they fight in the British wars? Or? Uh, I find it very I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I mean, the Irish here. kind of like. Well, I mean, Dublin was 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 a big. Um, it's where all the so soldiers were kept. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, an interesting. They had a fort in um, uh, the Pigeon House. Where is that? It rings end again. Oh, rings end. Okay. And they had cannons. They had all the uh, all the ammunitions were kept out in ships, right? You know, uh, way back. And uh, all the cannons weren't facing England; they were facing Dublin. So they were more threat. They were more worried about the threat from within in Ireland than than with that, yeah. With, from outside, you know. Yeah, interesting. Wow. Yeah, we've been the been the been the fighters for many mm. wars, I think. You know. But no, I don't think so. We were mostly poets and fishermen. We were mostly fishing and fighting. But you know, you know what I find since I since I've come here, and I'm not trying to you know flatter you know, the Irish or anything like that. But loves like, us, <laughs> loves us. <laughs> but I, I'm sure you've noticed the same thing, you know, uh, Michael. Like I, I went to just to give you an example. I went to a pub, um, a little pub in the, the Strawberry Beds, right? Oh, Strawberry Hall, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was the Wren's Nest, just a bit further down. Oh, right, yeah. And in that pub, right, there was a little session going on, and they were all there jamming away, and it was brilliant. Like the music was so good, 
and I was like, gosh, you guys all professionals. And like, no, I'm the lollipop lady, and she was, he was the baker, and he was yeah, the postman. Yeah. And it was like, gosh, like this was just something. But they were, they could have had a record, like they were that good. Yeah, you know? I mean that's the problem. Everyone could do it. <laughs> <laughs> I t- I'm telling you, if you're an artist, it's humbling coming here to uh, Ireland because. The yeah, arts are know, big we're, here. We're, the we're arts people, are... people. Yeah. You know. I mean, another, there's another theory about that, and that's it was a pirate island. A pirate island. Yeah. yeah. You know, there was the place was full of pirates. So down in West Cork and, and places like that, you couldn't. Um, I think there was a certain period they weren't using British coin; they were using Spanish coin. Oh, you know, nice. yeah. it, it was just overrun by pirates. And you know, a pirate could attack a village at any time. So you had to be friendly. Right. Ah, okay, <laughs> yeah. to, in, in order to survive. So the, the, whole, the whole wit and the humor was about survival too. And I often say to people as well, kindness and manners are survival yeah. tactics. You it goes know. a long way. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You know, it goes round and round. And yeah. I, don't, I think kindness and humanity mm. is really a survival tool, you know? Gosh, yeah. You know, yeah. so we are, yeah, I'm very proud of our race. We're good people, mm. human beings. That is, you know, there is only one race, the human That's race. That's exactly it. You got it. Yeah. We're just a little bit more like melatonin in the skin. Nah, we're all colours, a rainbow. No, we are all the same colour. Are we? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Mm. Translucent. Translucent. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the. I think this is one of the dumbest things ever. Is is uh, separate people by th- the level of melatonin in the skin. That yeah, that's, that's called racism. You know? Yeah, but Gosh, it's yeah. it's a- actually th- even giving a name to it, mm. it's it's giving it too much credit because it's it literally it's I I see no point in it. Mm. Yeah, well. Yeah, that's the stance. That's the proper stance to take. Mm. The same yeah. as we have uh, a nationalism, yeah? patriotism. It's yeah, it's you. You're proud. You, you. You're basically. Is you're proud of something that you had no voting. Like you, mm. you, you win the lottery of birth, and you happen by accident to be bur- born in the particular land, and. There's nothing to be proud of. You, you had, you didn't. Well, I, I think that's why travel is important. You know, I think see, visiting other cultures and and living within other cultures is, yeah. you know, not everybody's the same. We're all very different. You know, we all live different. We're, we're the same, but we're not the same. You know, I mean, diversity is is the yeah, one beautiful thing about humanity. That's mm. the thing. You know, thing, but and that that's that's within the family. That's you know, we're all different. But the thing is, um, what we're missing is the acknowledgement of diversity. That we are diverse, di- diverse species, and that's the only that's the the most crucial step to actually come to terms with the idea that we agree to it. We are diverse, instead of trying to m- get everybody to the same level. Yeah, you're very deep. <laughs> I see. I understand yeah. what you're saying, too but you know, you, you could find you could find somebody in Ireland who's never left Ireland. You know, and oh, you can find you know, people in Ireland you know. that they never left wherever they lived. Yeah, yeah well, it, it, but I mean, it's nothing wrong with that either. You no, know? sometimes yeah, but I, I remember talking to she was Sean McGinley. The golden rule. That's really it, isn't it? The golden rule. Sean yeah. McGinley was telling me one time the most travelled person he'd ever met had never left Donegal. <laughs> <laughs> he was yeah. a fiddle player. Right. And he'd never he'd never slept in the same bed twice, you know. <laughs> and I think uh, that's you know that's the, so you can travel within your village, you know. Oh gosh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm lucky. I've travelled a lot of the world, and I love travel. What know? was the furthest place you've been to? What was the, the most exotic or the most exotic? The most furthest is Australia. Australia. <laughs> but like, yeah. uh, but I was there for the first time. I was in Australia was for two days. Don't ever do that. Right. Two yeah. gigs in two days. Oh, Don't ever gosh. do that. Yeah. But. Uh, the most exotic? I don't know really. I mean, everything's Harlem, really yeah, exotic. Or, uh, Harlem. or New Orleans. I have to get the name of that place in New Jersey. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, that's pretty exotic. Yeah. Uh, exotic. 
I mean, I love New Orleans. Mm. Just I loved, I loved around the um, uh, kind of projects there. They are banana trees in their gardens. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, I just yeah. love that kind nice, of yeah. climate. And I love, I thrive in cities. I grew up in South London, so. Oh, nice. Sorry, I love um, New York, you know. Will, there is a question for you. What do you think about Da Vinci Code? The Da Vinci Code? Um, you mean like the book or the movie? Yeah, I think that's that's what. Uh, in what with in what regard though? Like yeah, just, just in general? Yes, and that's oh. from Peter. Peter. <laughs> Peter wants you to touch on religion. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, God, I, you know, I to be perfectly honest, I never saw the full movie, uh, but I think the main thing I got from that movie was a yarn about some kind of murder in a, I don't know, that was something to do with. I think the premise was the that, last that, supper, that, that the Christ the and, had, and Mary Magdalene had had had, had a child. Oh right! Oh that. So okay. there was a blood. There yeah. was another bloodline. The bloodline, right? Okay. I think so. Merovings, wasn't it? It's what? Yeah. Merovings, 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 like the French. Uh, yeah, there was, a, well, there was a connection with France. Yeah. And so another right. question for you: Will, what kind of brushes are you using? Okay, these are hog hair, pig hair brushes, hog hair, br natural hair. These are the most basic uh, brushes you could possibly get. Filberts, rounds. Um, I just like to use a loaded brush. I think somebody was asking me there about my technique. Uh, my technique is basically um, whatever I see there, I try to put on the canvas. Like it's as basic as that. That is just my technique. I mean, I, I think when I was younger, I was messing around with different mediums and kind of laying, layering, and glazing and this kind of thing. And, I still utilize glazes and that in that to that you know for maybe finishing a painting but essentially the meat of my painting is just what I see up there I I do there now I I can't replicate it I wouldn't be considered like a photo realist painter um, because I'm not trying to I'm kind of filtering it through my own interpretation of Jerry you know but um, it's just whatever comes out comes out and um, I like to uh, I draw a lot in a sketchbook, so I'm always drawing. Mm. It's funny because I was you take the train into town and I'm sketching on the train, and I've got sketchbooks filled with people reading everything, and now they're all filled with masks. It's yeah, it's right. a bizarre thing. Yeah. So um, there's not much to draw in a mask. <laughs> it's a, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, missing half the totally, face. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I kind of see painting as me sketching, as particularly with a, a, a three-hour stint like this. I'm basically sketching with color. So I'm just trying to lay in the notes as I see them and the movement, you know, of Jerry and you know, what I'm seeing here. So yeah, that's, that's it really. Another yeah. question. What colors are you using for Jerry's lips and eyes? Okay. For the lips, I used, uh, Indian red, a bit of white, and, um, I think it was, um, ultramarine blue or raw umber, that kind of mixture to set his basically the lights are quite warm and the shadows are cool. So I'm adding more blues and grays and, and cool notes within some of the shadows to push them back. But then, you know, on the flip side, there are some shadows that are quite warm. So like for instance, the shadow on his inner eye here and under his nose. So I push the temperatures. So that's why I've got quite a bit of color here because I'm utilizing warm tones, yellows and reds and the blues and the greens so i'm pushing temperature a lot so um yeah, does that help um, so anyway have you done a lives kind of only you know lock, well, only lockdown i did i did one yeah, of my know. wife in lockdown uh, but this is really um it's been the nice second format. one it's brilliant i think but see i was doing it at home with my phone and uh, but I think we have a camera guy here and a sound or anything. That's handy, yeah. Oh man, this is this is fantastic. I'm yeah. just keep bringing up the deep politics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm trying to stay away. Get from brain <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to stay away from politics. Stay positive, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stay away from politics. Just maybe focus on the psychology, yeah. maybe spirituality. Spirituality. That's not a bad one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Was, yeah. Absolutely. Gosh. You know, it's interesting with COVID. I think uh, it's given everyone a time to think more. You know. Um, so people are thinking a lot more about stuff. So and speaking of thinking, yeah. one of the one of the you know when we we're, were talking about uh, prisons like a minute ago, and they consider uh, 
and the solitary isolation as a the inhuman form of punishment. Oh yeah, absolutely. It would because be. one of the most brutal thing you can do to a person is to leave him with his own thoughts. Nice. And a lot of people have a mass problems with dealing with his or her thoughts. Mm. But I think you need. Um, I think wasn't it young? I mean, I'm not not religious, but I but I think it was young. Said that. If if you have a faith, it's like an anchor, you know. If you, you, you it would get you through. Oh yeah. More than absolutely. Somebody yeah. who hasn't. Definitely. You know, and I've seen I've seen that uh, with, with some friends with the big, big faith. One one in particular was a Hindu. Who lived for for, for much longer than he should have. Right. He just believed. That he should. Well, he just had faith, and I think faith is. Is a very important thing, you know. Oh, yeah, I don't know what it is, whether it's faith in nature or but people or friends, family. Mm. The, the, the God. I, think, I think you need to kind of, you know, and I don't mean even a higher being. It's, it's just that. But the subject of faith is okay, you know. Is like the subject of faith and the actual idea of 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 a belief as a as a concept. It's it's with us for millennia since the almost very beginning. Since the cognitive, um, since the cognitive uh, revolution, where our minds developed, the frontal cortex that we are, is separated us uh, us as a species from our cousins, mm. and gave us the ability to abstract things. Mm. And one of the things that so far that we know is that we are the only species that can imagine, discuss things that don't exist. For for animals, is what you see is what you have. Yeah, well, I, you know, my first band was called An Emotional Fish. How did you come up with that name? Well, I often think, well, now, I don't know how it came up with that. Did it just happen to you? I do often nature? think that, that uh, you know, I mean, there was a movie called Rumble Fish, I think. Uh, Robo Fish? Rumble Fish. Oh, Rumble Fish, yeah. Yeah, uh, Coppola movie. And that was around about the time with Mickey Rourke. And I was a oh, big Mickey Rourke. Right, so yeah. maybe Tom Waits was in it, I think, okay. as well. Yeah. So maybe that influenced me with An Emotional Fish. But also, like, how. I, who do we think we are that we can kind of know what animals are thinking? Uh, <coughs> you know, I mean, you know, who? Yeah. I, don't, I think I, I much prefer the spirituality of like native people or ancient cultures mm. that kind of see spirit, spirit in all the animals. So, that we're all one thing, you know, and, exactly and essentially we're all stardust. That, that's anyway. exactly what what the idea of uh, natural naturalism is. Mm. That we don't believe in a higher being, but we believe that every every matter has a spirit. Yeah, but that so yeah. would be rock, like a Native American. This rock people is would tree. think, yeah. So hunters gatherers in <coughs> hundred thousand years ago or whatever, when we were still nomadic, mm -hmm. when they were going to hunt and they would be praying, mm. they wouldn't be praying to a, 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 a god here. They were praying to the spirit of this particular deer that they were going to hunt. Yeah. Because that's what the belief was that. A mim mimicking uh, comes from that as well. You know, you mimicked an animal till you knew its next move. Yes. And you'll see. Yeah, the Native American Indians did that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and you'll see, like, even puppy dogs will play like that. And, you know. Right. So it's, 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 it's an innate thing, which we're, we are losing a lot of those. Uh, you know, civilization has changed us. Yes, of course. I mean, we mimicking somebody now is considered rude, but it's not rude. It's it's it was called rude because people were trying to control who we are. Right. Yeah. The, the religion is all, all always very uh, touchy subject. A religion. I, I tell you, Louis Theroux came out with a thing. Was yeah, who's Louis Theroux? Yeah, yeah, he Louis has a, Theroux, a documentary. Yeah. Great, yeah. It's great. It's brilliant. It's oh, amazing. he's amazing. Yeah. But he. He, he's an atheist, you know, and he, and, and he said, you know, I don't believe in God. I thought this was very really? interesting. Yeah. I don't believe in God, but I do believe in religion. Okay. And he's seen the what power. What does he mean by that? The pa I think he's seen the power of religion to motivate people and to get them to do, whether it's awful things or wonderful things. Sure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know. Without the presence All of the a name God, religion. Yeah. just a religion. Yeah. I thought that was fascinating. Well, the subject of the faith, yeah. the 
faith and conviction that you're convinced that mm. you're righteous. Well, like th they say that's how Christianity really kind of became oh, yeah. huge. Was the, the, the Roman emperor? Yeah, yeah only because what was his name? He, he fought with a cross on a flag and kind of. We are really getting deep here. <laughs> Constantine. Yeah. Yeah. Constantine. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and and like had never s defeated his en enemies greater. So he said, "We'll have this." Well, Christianity. <laughs> it seems to be working. <laughs> well, I mean. To put in Mike Tuffins here. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about Jesus, like the, the person of Jesus. Oh, right? here we go. Uh, <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't well, have we get back, this T-shirt. Brings us back to that shirt. Uh, well, we get back to painting. Well, that's, no, the, that's the mother. This is not the mother. Right? This, we're getting to the heart of the matter here. Yeah. Yeah. God, we could really go yeah. go this subject. There's, a, there's another subject about death and art. Death and which art. Which is very interesting. Oh, but, but now now we're going into um, psychedelic. No, it's, the same, it's, the same, it's the same thing using using uh oh, it's, it's, uh, like we're, we're going um, into if i wasn't yeah we were if we were in a private room perfectly but we're going all over the world now yeah. but i mean what's, <laughs> what's that <laughs> show be careful you know what's that show with tommy is it tommy turner tommy yeah. turner is great and, yeah he, they just speak off the cuff don't they I mean, yeah they it's, i mean it's wonderful yeah. yeah yeah no it's important no there's, there's so many i i'm so i'm fascinated there's one particular subject the devil in art Okay. Just to switch yeah. over from yeah. it a little bit. <laughs> <coughs> but the, 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 devil, the devil apparently has two walk-on parts in the Bible, I think. One, one, in, one in the Garden of Eden and another, to, another on the mountain with Jesus. In the desert, yeah. And it's right, just yeah, like two walk-on yeah. parts yeah. of a massive book, you know what I mean? But, but the, somebody said, you know, hang on, we could use this guy, you know what I mean? And it's kind of transformed. And originally, I think it's the first image in art of... of, of uh, the devil is, is a blue angel because it was an angel that was cast down from the sky. But, oh yeah. But then, but then but then the whole propaganda of, of using the subject of sin and thing, they, they apparently they took the image from from a, an old pagan god called Bez, you know, the horned creature and but, uh, but it, it, it's all fake. It's all it became it came think from so, uh, yeah. but it, well it, it it's a fact. It came from Faust, you know, the whole images of hell came from No, but uh, Jesus. Uh, we are, we are, no, Jesus we are, never we are, spoke of, of burning hells and stuff like that. Well he spoke uh, I'm pretty sure he spoke of evil and Satan and the wiles of Satan. No, I think he only met him he only met him once on the mountaintop. I'm not really sure. <laughs> anyway, I'm not I'm not an authority oh, yeah, it's, on this, but, you know, so but, but it's, it's an interesting debate, I mean, that whole um, But apparently it's 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 Jesus fa it's fast. What is the guy who wrote fast? It's fast, you know? Well it, it is in the Bible of uh, It's not in the Bible. That's some some guy well, gone the mad and, and yeah. with his own torture has invented all these hells. It's it actually is not, it's not from in the Bible. Fire. Dante's Inferno, exactly. Yeah. Oh. But if we're talking, uh, if you're on the subject of a religion, wow, <laughs> <and> this guy, <laughs> you're really bringing up the subjects. It's <coughs> well, only like two thousand years, yeah, in our history. Yeah. It's well, they, 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 you know, it's it, 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 it's one movement of two thousand years. There's, there's Amun Ra in Egypt was worshipped for four thousand years. You but know, well, and, uh, who's on Amun Ra? You but know, it's a very long history, the human history. But if you th just to get back... Christianity is young, yes. Yeah. Well, but if you think about the, the, the person of Jesus, right? If you think oh about... God. Which one? Jesus. But yeah. which one? Jesus. But you know, oh, the, yeah, the, the yeah. statistically, there could be like dozens of them. There's only one that got really famous. Well, the really one famous. that's in the, in the Bible. Yeah, Jesus that, Christ. That's yeah. actually... Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually a, 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 an am, 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 amalgam of a few people. I, I don't know about that, but... It's, well, I mean, the thing is, you you are talking about people's faith, so yeah, it's not. I think you do have to. But be, if you, th if you, you do have to be respectful, you do. You, you, I, I I do believe in respect. No, I, I, whether you I'm, believe anything or not, if somebody does believe yeah. it, then you then you have to. I'm, I'm not sure. Mean, I don't mean it in a including people who believe in fairies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean it in a, like in a wrong way. It's just in any like negative way, but yeah. it's. It's more of a symbol. Don't forget the horns. <laughs> it's more of a symbol than a person. No, uh, you think so? Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's, no. a, it's several different subjects, course, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's the philosophy. It's, I mean, I, lo I, I actually, one of my favorite things is Woody Allen said, 
if the Christ saw what they were doing in his name, you know, he'd never stop puking. Well, you know that, I mean? yeah, that's, I mean, sure. So, you know, it's, 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 it, the word of Christ is, yeah. is, is a respectful and... Oh, gosh, it's a beautiful thing. It yeah, really of course is. it yeah. is, yeah. yeah. And that's the ideal yeah. that I think, you know, what, what the Spanish Inquisition did to it was another thing, you know. So, you know, I, th I think yeah. we're, modern man is kind of, we're touching on a lot of things, you know, now. I mean, I kind of take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of everything, you know. But nature would be really what I believe in. Now, were you always like that? Or when, when, was it when you moved to Carlo? Was it kind of... No, I mean, the it? reason I moved to the country, I mean, I'm interested in anthropology and, and uh, native people and, and, their, and their spiritual beliefs a lot. So I, mm. the reason I really, one of the reasons I moved to the country is I wanted to know all the all my native species of plants and I wanted to get much closer to nature, you know? Right. And get out of the traffic, yeah. you know? Yeah, so, yeah. you know, and, and, and have a lot of kids, you know, so. Oh, that's great. I've got four yeah. kids in the country. Lovely. Yeah. It's grand, but I, but I, you know, it's not. Don't you know, I wouldn't. Uh, it's not for the faint-hearted moving somebody <laughs> from the city. Well, I think a lot to of people, the country. It's it, it's not easy. A lot of people are moving into the country since COVID. Yeah. They are, yeah. So it's. I think you know, yeah. A friend of the mine. Country's a good place. A friend country. of mine who lived in Carlo. He told me we were in in subject of people living in Dublin and going outside of Dublin, traveling mm. for whatever reasons. And he said that the people living in Dublin, that when they go outside of M50, they need a passport and a visa. Yeah. That's what they're doing. No, the dopes, yeah. Yeah. No, the I, history. I'm, I'm myself, I live in Clonmel. In yeah, Clonmel, yeah. yeah. Tipperary. Yeah. Beautiful place. Lovely place, lovely, quiet. I think as I grew up in, in, in London, like during the 1970s when there was a bombing campaign and I faced a lot of racism being Irish mm. I kind of came to did Ireland you? did you face racism? a lot yeah. of racism really? wow. yeah well I kind of my parents would have went to the no blacks no dogs no Irish wow, London and we kind of grew up with that but when I came back to Ireland I thought it was one united kind of happy place you know yeah and that kind of uh, really threw me when I saw all these divisions you know I think people thought I was a gypsy and when I when I when I Bush went to schools, you know, because whatever. Right. So I saw a lot of divisions. So I just blanked them all. So I, I just see Ireland as one beautiful kind of place. I don't, you know, my friends all over Ireland. I don't don't distinguish between one place and another. Yeah. Do you have a favorite part of Ireland? Like, where would be your favorite place? I, I'm a dub, you a know. Dub, I love, yeah. I love, I love the Liffey. Yeah. You yeah. know, because I'm, but basically, because I'm from there. Yeah. But, but you know. I, I, I've just found my DNA. It, it tells me I'm from where I'm living now. Do you know, Carlo, West. Oh, that's where you're kind of uh, Wicklow. You know, so oh. yeah, Leinster. Yeah. But but when I mean, you know, please please let me into Kerry because I love Kerry. <laughs> you know, Kerry is beautiful. I love Cork. I like, yeah. I, I you know, I have so many good friends in Cork. I can always get on great with people from Cork. My friends in Belfast, mm. friends in Donegal. You know, I don't, I, I don't really, uh, maybe because I've grown up with that kind of, uh, people will always call you something, one street will call another street, or oh, they're like this, or oh, they're like that. Mm. So I, I like to kind of just follow me home rules, you know. Mm. Like I say, back to that, you know, it's only one race, the human race. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Jesus. I'm gonna be exhausted after this. <laughs> You're gonna need a pint. My brain. <laughs> I am gonna need a pint, and I can't get a pint. <coughs> species. Species. Were there any more questions for people? Or no, or actually, no? I think people are deep into the painting. Then. Okay, great. Drop fighting. <laughs> are you an Irish speaker? Would you speak Irish? No, I no. don't. I'm. I kind of like I say, grew up in London, and family mm. brought from Dublin. Yeah. So my daughter is. Is she? Yeah. 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 And because I came from England, we kind of skipped the Irish classes in school. You know, oh, yeah. the past. Okay. My, my wife is the same. Now, how'd you meet your wife? That was. Oh, know? that's a long story. Can't oh, tell you that. Oh, okay. Can't yeah. tell you that. I can. <laughs> <laughs> we met. We met. We met. Uh, we just. I fell in love with love at first sight. I just so I met her outside a nightclub. Oh, great! <laughs> Here in Dublin. 
in Dublin, yeah, wow. down the road, yeah. Wow, isn't that something? Yeah. And was she uh, studying at the time, or as an artist or a musician? She was. She was working. Uh, she's a, a stylist. Oh wow! Yeah. Working in uh, working for Brown Thomas. So wow. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. But uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun that summer. Wow. And we still do. We're lucky. Brilliant. We're lucky. During lockdown, we've had each other, and it's been yeah. really, really nice, actually. That's brilliant. I think it's been a challenge for maybe some people. For us, it was great not to be running around dropping the kids everywhere. You oh know? yeah, yeah. How do they enjoy lockdown? Do they? Do they like it? My kids, th- yeah. I mean, yeah. They, they, you know, one in particular thrived. You know, I have a son who's who's taught himself classical guitar. You know? Brilliant. Well, what so how you, you use play? your time. You know? Yeah, that's so true. I play lots of instruments really badly. Well, what, what would be the one, your go-to one when you're writing music? Um, I, you know, I play around with a guitar. Um, I thought you were going to bring a guitar. guitar mostly, yeah. You, you, didn't, you weren't thinking of bringing a guitar or anything? No, uh, I wasn't. I was going to bring a saxophone just oh, to have really? it on my lap. Wow. You should have told me. Wow. Yeah, I bought a saxophone. I'm in love with this. I have a saxophone. I don't. I don't play anything very well. I'm never confident enough <coughs> to play on stage. You know. Okay. Really? Because I, I'm surrounded by such fabulous musicians. You know, I, I play with amazing musicians. So right. why would I show myself up? You know. I mean, I, I enjoy being a singer, and I think if you're singing as well, if you, you know, it's all art. You know, I'm, I'm about movement. So mm. you know. Sorry, Will. Um, there's a question for you. How is the lighting from the outside affecting the painting light inside, if at all? Outside. Well, the lighting is changing dramatically. It's, uh, but I suppose when I started this portrait, I knew the light was going to change. So what I basically do is I just lay in very broad approximations of the color and even the light in the dark shadow pattern. So you can see like these shadow shapes and the light shapes, I'm trying to keep them distinct. But I knew things were gonna change. So if you keep it broad for as for a while, at some point, it can only just get more dramatic. The light and shadow shapes are gonna start to really reveal themselves and then it's gonna get, as the night goes on, it'll get more dramatic. So if you can lock in early to the shadow shapes, you'll be okay, so, and then, like the light now, I just know it's going to get darker, so I'm just slowly building up the smaller tones within the light. And um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of off the cuff sitting here, and um, um, I suppose if I had it all my way, I would work in the morning and work from a natural light window and, you know, maybe do morning till the um, early afternoon, something like that, you know, with, with somebody, uh, because the light from the natural window is fantastic, but but this is fun too. I mean, I, it's I, there's a lovely warm light coming from the uh, above us, and there's a cool light that's set up over there. So, you know, it, it, it's it wouldn't what be my um, it's a great challenge. So it's different for me. So it's great, and it suits Jerry, I think, this lighting because it's almost like a, kind of stage lighting. Maybe you got cools and warms, so it's much more theatrical. I don't know if the natural lighting would actually suit you. Or, um, you know, That's well, why I mean, I'm a it, vampire. <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably would, but it would be a very different mm-hmm. um, mood to the painting, whereas the the color is is um, is quite dramatic here, and that you know it suits your uh, your character. So oh, thank you. Yeah, it does with the warm and the cool. So yeah. uh, I have a question: Does it does it distract you by talking to a subject while you're painting? Um, I mean, to an extent, yeah. But I see by talking to you, you're you're getting into your, yeah. Hopefully the, I don't know the, um, the barriers are kind of breaking a little bit. And um, mm-hmm. right. there was one more question. So there. I get to know you better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, that helps, that helps paint. the paint. Yeah. Oh yeah. What color for the eyes? Or yeah, I've been mixed? I've been dancing around that for. I've yet to paint the eyes really. I'm just waiting. I was waiting for the lighting to get to be more secure. So I'm gonna get into that now. So. The lighting, uh, or the eyes now, I'll start to hone in on them now. All right, great. You're okay anyway, Jerry? For I'm good. Yeah, yeah. All right, great. I think so. And people's <coughs> eyes change color. They, they do, see. yeah. Depending on what's re- like, if the, what's reflecting into... Uh, it's amazing. I uh, know my eye color changes quite a bit. Does it? You've yeah. got blue eyes, kind of blue-gray eyes. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Gray, there's a green, but if I'm near to see, they'll change they color. They change, right. Yeah. That's that's normal. 
Oh yeah, well, yeah. Do- people's eyes. Doctor Wheel. Well, <laughs> <laughs> people's. If you have blue eyes, they change. I right. find they change okay. a lot more than if you have um, dark brown, brown, brown eyes. eyes. Yeah, yeah. They, they they reflect more of the surrounding color if you have blue eyes. So. Yeah. It's funny. There's a guy we know up in Donegal who surfs. Um, mm. A brilliant surfer up in Ross and. Um, you can just if you if you met this guy, you would know this guy looks at the ocean every day of his yeah, life. Yeah, right. I mean, his eyes look like the color the Atlantic. It's yeah. just it's amazing. Yes. No, I, I, I when I'm raised by the sea, yeah, they 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 get bluer. Torn into yeah. the sea, yeah. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Did you manage to get anywhere over lockdown? Did you kind of? Uh, no, I haven't left the mountain. Wow, really. you've been on the mountain. <laughs> on the mountain. Uh, a question for you, Jerry. Uh, how do you write your songs? Is it the music first or the work first? I, I actually don't have a technique, you know. I don't have any one technique that I use to write songs. It's, it's, it's uh, You know, it can it can come out. But anyway, it could be a piece of music, and then I kind of uh, try a melody for it, and then and then put them, them words, or I might write down a lot of words. You know. Okay. So I don't I don't have one method of doing it really. Right. Okay. And the second part of that question is, where do you get your inspiration from? Again, it, it, it's kind of, con- <coughs> you know, well, I'm probably rubbish at kind of, they say you, you need to be in position for the muse to arrive, you know, so just go to your desk every day, you know, at the same time. I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably, I'm not very disciplined that way, you know. Um, so there's not a time of the day that you, you're always sort of... Night time. Night time, yeah. Late at night, I would have lots of ideas. Wow, yeah. So and you're a night owl. And the, yeah, definitely a night owl, and you know that's why they say you should have a pad by the side of your bed, you know, because you you might get, usually get those ideas just before. But um, I mean, I've tried. I mean, a long time doing it, but I've had some interesting uh, songs. And I was writing a piece, a piece of theatre there recently. It was great because it was the first time I had an actual theme, and the, and something I wanted to say, mm. and they came spilling out, you know, writing writing songs about Dublin. And then uh, other other songs. I mean, celebrate. Uh, I'm still deciphering. You know, I'm still. I wrote it as as a fairly young man, and I'm still kind of uh, wondering. In fact, there's, there's there's a lyric in it. it. It's a planet full of traffic lights, and traffic light abuse is one of the lyrics in the song. And on the way here, I was, you know, hit a lot of traffic lights, but also. You know, the lyric kind of struck me how it's, you know, especially through this, I guess, communicate the way the government are trying to communicate, uh, you know, what we should do and how we're seeing one rule for some people, another rule for another. And I think that's that's what that lyric says to me. You know, so so in a way, I've written things that are still talking to me. You oh, know? yeah, that's right. So, so I guess it's like a, it's like painting. I mean, actually, writing a song is like painting. Yeah. So you know, you'll you'll maybe rip it up, and, you know. Uh, so and, and 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 sometimes the best the best songs are they still communicate to you. Know, they from, are yeah. mostly they, it's like it comes through you, you know, yeah. and really they 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 usually happen really quickly. Right. You right, know, right. you're labouring. So and it's not working. No, it's no, not working. It's so true. It's, yeah. You know, and I think that's yeah. a lot a lot of artists. Yeah. That's how it is. You yeah. Know? If you're labouring too much, it's it's not gonna work. Yeah. So did your did your like subject style change over time, and what you're writing on about like what's your subject now um, these days? May, yeah, may, no, not really. I mean, to be honest, I have a few songs. I mean, somebody I think somebody once said you only write three songs in your life anyway, and you're just repeating them all the time, you know. And I maybe. Uh, what what do they mean by that? It's kind of like the same your structure themes. Or, or your themes, yeah. You know, right. and, and like, you know, obviously there's universal themes um, that hit hit home. 
you know, I mean, I, I, I spent a lot of time in, in, in uh, Egypt and <coughs> uh, places like that, and all those songs are, happy be in, in, in everything, and that, that means baby, you know? And it's like, darling, you know, sweetheart. Okay. So, you know, I mean, this, this, this uh, I love that. I've written a song called True Friends, which, is, which I think is about what kind song. of... Um, I mean, sometimes you. I find if you explain what your song is about to you, you maybe spoil it for somebody else because okay, yeah. it it means yeah. something to somebody else. Yeah. So I, I don't really like to explain them too much. Hmm. But I mean, that song is obviously about not being afraid to lose somebody that they they never go away. Right. They never will, even if they leave this life. You know, they'll still be with you. Absolutely, you know? and then yeah. even more so actually. Yeah. I think True Friends is mostly about. But I, you know, I wish I knew what I was doing. If I knew what I was doing, I'd be doing it. <laughs> do, do you have to, uh, like I know for myself, if I'm painting and drawing, I need to be doing it all the time. Otherwise mm. I kind of, I feel rusty. Like, do you have to be singing all the time or do you have to be kind of? Yeah, I mean, you know, kind of, I really would miss I miss kind of shows now. I miss performing a lot now. Or would you uh, sing on your own in the mountains? Or would you kind of no, I'm not really, yeah. to be honest. I used to be a painter and decorator and I'd sing more there, you know? Oh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, um, I mean, I like picking up a melodies. I mean, now I'm thinking more, you know, I've a lot, I've a, a mountain of unfinished work, you know? And I always find you need to be kind of in the studio ready to finish. You don't actually finish it till it's, uh, I mean, uh, Brian Eno spoke about the word release. Mm. You know, when you release a record, right? that's the most difficult thing to do when you're re releasing something because it's almost something you're nurturing, like a, you know, to release it is to really like let go of it. Okay. Yeah. And, th and that is quite it, it difficult. It no longer I'm, becomes your own. I'm, yeah, it's no yeah. longer yours. Yeah. And I, I think I'm pretty bad at that. If anyone who knows me. So you hang on to your Yeah, I your hang on to it. Like, yeah, and I don't like them to leave, you know. And then when I do, I certainly like them to be well armed when they do leave, you know. So, <laughs> so I kind of like, I'm quite perfectionist, probably to my detriment. Yeah. Um, but um, I do think the way what's happening in the world now I think what, what do you think I, about I don't, music I, I don't, I've never known a time in in my life and I'd say most people could say that where we're all going through the same thing right yeah. everybody in the world yeah yeah oh sure yeah so I think that's you know that's going to lead to some interesting oh yeah songs you yeah. know an, an art that is just yeah. going to go wow that's exactly how we all feel. Right. Yeah. You know, so it, the, it's quite it's quite an opportune time, really, mm. for artists. You know, and also I think it's 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 quite it's really heartwarming to see how much people are missing art, and you know how much we are appreciated actually, okay. and how much when we fall out of the 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 system, it's it's a big hole. You know. Mm. Absolutely, so, I mean, that's, that's, that's culture. Yeah. yeah, it's culture, yeah. And I think we're realizing, you know, we are part of the culture, you know, and Absolutely. I'm very, very honored to be that. Mm. You know, but, but I mean, I'm not, you know. Has, to, has like streaming live music and downloading and all that, like the whole thing about it, like even CDs, not making a CD, like this, it's changed a whole lot. Music it? sales have, have basically gone. Really? They're, they're gone. Like, so I, I cannot make a living from music sales any longer. Is that because people are just downloading music? And they're yeah, kind of they're, they're not downloading, they're just streaming. So streaming. They're, they're just listening to it for free, basically. And so, you know, so the only in income we had was from live. Live events. Yeah. Live events. So to monetize something you do like this, if this was a show, mm. How do we get people to pay? You know, competition's a good idea, but you know what I mean. How do we'll have a meeting on that? What, but yeah, we? but how do how do we kind of how do you and I get? You know, well, let's, but, let's but set I mean, it up. It, it, it's oh, you know, I'm talking about 
proper earning, you know, yeah, oh, sure. actually being able to pay your mortgage yeah. and, and feed your kids and maybe send your kids to college if, mm. if, if necessary. How, 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 how are we going to do that if we're yeah. giving it away all the time? Oh, sure, yeah. You know, and, and the thing about my industry is I've got like probably 10,000 people behind me just willing to give it away for free. Oh, right, in the, in the industry. Yeah, there are yeah. like soon to be Not artists. Like keen or, yeah. People who yeah. think fame is really, yeah. you know, wow. really the, some kind of currency. Mm. There's like. Um, there is a difference between like I'm not an artist I'm more of a craftsman mm -hmm. than an artist um, like and there is a difference between doing things to be recognized aka famous and yeah it's an issue or doing things for a living yeah oh sure like yeah. treating it like a craft like mm -hmm. you well a business yeah yeah and not, not only a business but as a primary economic and activity yeah you, you you do some stuff for living it well there's an it's always annoyed me and it, it did take a turning point people always say artists are not great business and they don't know anything about business you know right. artists aren't good at business right it just annoys me so much that because you know picasso was pretty pretty oh, hot. absolutely and i think andy yeah. warhol was very good at it you know it's like, it. you know it's like yeah. so it, it, it's well, rubens it's, too it's, you know peter paul rubens he was a brilliant yeah. a, a, lot, a lot of them yeah and it's like it it's it, it's it's untrue you know mm -hmm. That's so true. i think yeah. i think it, you know kind of once you say those things yeah. you take the power away yeah and i and i, and I know with me and and my when i decided to come back and, and be a, a, an artist and make a living from it i thought well you know if you brought me into your house or your bar and said please paint this bar, I could tell you exactly how much it would cost. Yeah, you can quantify it very yeah. easily. Yeah. So, so you have to kind of do the same with your art. Yeah. Of course, no, but that's the, the people, people, um, uh, it's especially like when you're in the social media circles and like w myself, because I do video and post-production and stuff like this, and I guess Will and yourself is in the same boat. People want to pay with exposure dollars. We call it exposure dollars. Mm. You do stuff for me, and I'm going to benefit from but it. But collaboration is really important. But the collaboration is the one thing. Yeah. Mm. But the difference is when somebody's taking advantage of people by promising them golden mountains, benefiting from it, but you'll get nothing out of it. I, I, I would do, I don't know what percentage, but I would do a lot of work every year for free. Yeah. And, and, but but and it's you do not that for actually what reason? for free. What's the reason for that? Um, it could be like you get your name out it there goes round and round. Yeah. It could be f uh, branding. It could be sure. publicizing. Yeah. It could be, you know. So it's not. It's not always about money. Money, yeah. But but it is about you being able to pay your rent. Sure. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't need to kind of, uh, and I don't think success should be should be kind of quantified. As monet a monetary thing, you yeah, know? I think it is. You know, I think that's. I think, good I think if if you're in the creative industry, the the money, the wealth, the remuneration is a byproduct. Product, yeah, a byproduct. A byproduct. Oh, a byproduct. It shouldn't be a focus of. But it, yeah, but it has to be if it's a business. No, it it does, but mm. it's it shouldn't be the it shouldn't be like if you're doing art and you're enjoying doing art and you do something that you enjoy and brings you happiness then I don't think the monetization of it, it should be the central focal point of it I mean it's it's very interesting like back to kind of what we were talking about with, with native faith and, and, and stuff like that the original kind of spirituality and stuff there's no native word in any la any native language for art yes, no. uh, and there's also no native word for walk really? it's the same thing <laughs> you know and, and the Indians called karma yoga you know it's like you know everything we do is 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 walk and art yeah that's true yeah even I mean it's funny but like it's a good point like I mightn't sell those drawings that I do on the train of people mm. but 
to me, they're a stepping stone to the work. And if I don't do that daily practice of drawing, mm. then I feel as if I won't be able to produce. You know what I mean? Well, it is. You, so you, it's yeah. all part of the work, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, same, same with me, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been very lazy, really. But dreaming. Dreaming. You right. know, dreaming is very important. You know, it's like I think Spielberg said, you know, like, I don't dream at night. I dream in the day. Okay. I dream. I dream. I dream, I dream for a living. Right. You know, and I think yeah. dreaming is really kind of. Jerry, would you let us know if you want to take a break? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's me. I might give me arms a break. No. Yeah, sure. No, no, take no, a no, break. No, you, yeah. you, no, no. no, no. I, I'm good. Conversation makes time go fly. Actually. Not too deep though. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we kind of uh, like put a, a, a mantle on it. Well, I'll just use this time to say, when I'm painting, normally every half an hour, 40 minutes or so, I just scrape the palette, get it clean. Um, this way my color tries to stay as, cl as clean as possible. Mm -hmm. And um, that's sort of the idea. Um, so, um, keep it clean. You've got your white spirits. Well, that's right. Yeah. Keep everything. T uh, and this way, your painting will um, will um, reflect that. Hopefully, we'll see. Do you want to take five? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. We just take five minutes, and then we'll come back. That's great. Okay, thanks, Jerry. I might just uh, clean. You have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was a painter and decorator.
Okay, hey, we're back live. Great. Back, everybody. Welcome back. Okay. So. Okay, so I'm just laying in uh, the finer of basically what I do at this stage is I've laid in the main parts of the flesh tones, the light darks and the broad tones. So now I'm kind of going in for the more particular, almost like puzzle pieces. I kind of look at Jerry's face like a puzzle and kind of separate the smaller little swatches of color, but try to keep that in mind of the whole. So um, I have to be careful not to put in, not to break up the face too much with these little notes of detail. So um, it's kind of a, um, this last hour or so, I'm going to hopefully bring this together. So I'm going to work on the eyes now. And um, lay in. Look at that intense gaze looking over at me. That is brilliant. That's great, Jerry. Just a little tip for when you're painting a portrait uh, is to get your mo whoever's posing for you, just to be sure to ask them when they're. Because what happens sometimes when you're painting, right? If I work on one eye and then you happen to like look over here, is there. And then I paint the eye, the other eye slightly, the eyes can almost look like one's wandering off a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, um, you, so you see it in some paintings actually, you can kind of see one eye. So to get them both looking in the exact same spot is, um, is uh, that's the challenge. You know. Yeah, particularly when you're walking from a live, not a lot of motion. Oh yeah, gosh yeah. My eyes, one of my eyes kind of wanders anyway. <laughs> I have one wild one, I think. And one who's trying to be tamed. <laughs> That's great. Right. Hi, Will from Wales. Love watching oh. you paint and the convo. Catherine Cavan. Oh, that's my sister in Wales. Hello, Kat. Hello, Mom and Dad. <laughs> hello, Julia. And hello, Lu Lucia and Harry, my, my wife and son, if you're watching. Happy Culture Night. Just to remind Happy everybody, this culture is Culture Night. night yeah. And um, where the focus is the arts, for this particular uh, venue of Culture Night. So let's keep the arts going. Yeah. And we got Jerry Fish here. Yeah. So um, Thank you. This is important for the artists. I think Culture Night is a, it, it's, 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 it's growing in Dublin, which has been, I think, last year. There were big concerts in um, uh, Dublin Castle, and there's a lot, a lot of uh, theatres, some wonderful stuff. It's a great night, great. I, I think they've had big, big gigs. I've done gigs on Stephen's Green here. Oh, did you? Yeah. Wow. You know, and it's, it's a great, great night. Wow. So it's kind of a little sad, little sad. Oh, yeah. But uh, great to keep it alive. Mm. Well, while you paint the eyes, can you say a few words about the paint, the color you pick? Sure. So I laid in uh, the whites of the eyes first, just to get the color of the, the sclera, the white of the eye. And as a rule of thumb, I try to paint the, the white of the eye the same general value tone as the flesh, except it's a cooler, grayer color. So I mix a bit of white, umber, blue, and a touch of Indian red. The Indian red is a great color for flesh and because it's a cool red, it grays the flesh really well. So, um, because people think the whites of the eyes are very, they're white. And if you do that, the person's gonna look like, a, I don't know, like a Victor, what was it? Like a Victor. Wild. Yeah. Wild character. Yeah, wild. Um, I think people's eyes are white just before they kill you. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? Is that what happened? I don't know. I, I haven't been killed yet. <laughs> uh, so then once that's done, the overall shape is in, then I lay in um, the iris, the colored part of the eye. And for Jerry, it's it's a gray blue. You know, it's granted that the, the lights change, so they're, they're quite dark. It's like when people pick a color for their when they want to paint a room in their house, they always think this is going to look great, but then they don't factor in the color of the light. And sometimes that changes the color of the room. So the, the light changes the color of your eye. 
Um, so, <coughs> with doing at, while I'm doing that, I also keep the shadow value, the shadow color, in this case a very deep, dark, um, warm brown, just to keep the eyes focused um, so that one, is, wasn't, one isn't wandering off. And I just drag the upper lid from one side to the other side just so I get those eyes. They gotta be perfect. It's gotta be, you know, as perfect as I can get considering the time constraints. So, and I, just to say too, when you're painting and you think you've done a great job, and if it's not, if it's just a little bit right, and you're unwilling to change it because you're worried of screwing it up, you have to be willing to sacrifice your little babies, your pets. You know, otherwise, um, you're never going to um, get better. So. Have no fear that you're going to get it the next time. You know, so, just don't be afraid to grow. That's it. Don't be afraid to grow. To to uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes. You know. In your performance, uh, mm -hmm. has there ever been a time when there was a huge mistake that happened live, and then what were you going to do? And then mistakes. Are what you want you know if it was the same performance every time if it was the same thing every time what would be the point in coming to see me twice and I need you to come and see me more than once <laughs> you okay. know so I, I it was and same in a studio you know yeah. with, with music mistakes mm. are the art you know? yeah you know and I think that that's it you know if I mean if it's all part of it well, even in your writing, if you if it's, if, if you, I mean, you know, the, the search of the lost chord. You know, it's it, it's about mistakes. It's about really getting out there and, I guess, I guess letting it come through you. Mm. Like it's not your. Try not to control it. You know, I mean, that's that's how I would see it. So mistakes are part and parcel. You yeah. want them. Yeah. But they lead to originality. Right. Yeah. I know. I, I kind of a lot of people do cover songs and start to start by covering other people's music. Right. <coughs> I remember <coughs> very early on trying to do other people's songs, and then go fuck this. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna write my own thing because no nobody could tell me I'm wrong when I do my own. Oh sure, of course. Thing yeah. you know. Whereas yeah. if I do somebody else's thing, it's like. Well, that's not very good, you know. Or I much prefer the original. Or has anybody ever covered Junior? So, gosh, that's better than what I did. Is that ever happened? Yeah, uh, I'd imagine that happens <laughs> to, uh, to Bob yeah. Dylan, like Bob Dylan's music. People who cover him sometimes it's wow, it's brilliant. Well, yeah. I think that's because he does such raw stuff. I mean, I've recently started uh, working. I don't know if you know the artist Daniel Johnson. Daniel Johnson, no, I don't. From Austin, Texas. Daniel Johnson. Well, you really need to kind of listen to Daniel Johnson. He's good, Johnson. is he? Yeah. It's, it's just, uh, Daniel's from Austin, Texas, and he... he it's uh, a big music scene in Austin, Texas. Yeah, yeah. well, he, he would have started in the 90s, but he, 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 Daniel <coughs> is, <coughs> excuse me, was diagnosed with bipolar. Okay. And uh, quite a crazy guy, and uh, his lyrics are just, Incredible, you know. There's a great film if you want to get to know Daniel Johnson. It's called The Devil and Daniel Johnson. All oh, right. And basically, he walked to McDonald's. He made these made these uh, uh, cassettes at home of his music. A massive Beatles fan. Wrote this wrote this album. Hi, how are you? And um, you know, but he, he, I, mean, he, I think the story is he gave a copy to someone. They go, oh, that's great. You have another one, and he'd go home and record the whole album again. He wasn't duplicating these these tapes. He was actually wow. creating one of oh, the originals. Gosh. I don't know how many he made. He's also a great um, visual artist. Is he still alive? Is he still alive? No, he passed away last year. So I've started to kind of uh, 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 record tributes to Daniel. Wow. And a lot of Daniel's music, you know, he would. It sounds like he, he, he wrote and recorded it in 10 minutes, you know, they're very raw, yeah. simple, the timing is... You actually hear a lot of the music, this is my opinion, it's how I... You can hear a lot of music going on in his head. Right. 
you know so interpreting it is great fun because you're interpreting the music you can almost sense he's hearing right okay you know he, he you can hear in his head he, there's a there's, i mean there's some songs he does I'm trying to think of one in particular but you know he's, he's playing it he's playing it along and, and he, he's playing to a tens of thousands of people screaming and roaring they're not there but you can hear them and you can sense them you know oh yeah come on let's go you know and it's uh -huh. he, he's amazing so daniel johnson would be like someone i'm working on uh, and i'd like to do a tribute album i've already done a couple of tracks right yeah uh, i've been on like the performance songs for would it be acoustic or electric? Ten years. Or he, he he writes on a, on a, a piano originally, and then and then guitar. And he play, you know, he plays very. You know, he's not a great player as such, but it's it's more the intention, and lyrically, he's incredible. You know, like yeah. do yourself a favor, be your own savior. You know, become your own savior, and it's just all this. Uh, would you do it acoustic, or would you do it? Uh, I, I've done actually. Uh, uh, I have a friend of mine's an arranger and did a classical arrangement of, of uh, a, a song of his called True Love Will Find You in the End mm. and it's it's just awesome but Beck has covered him Tom Waits has oh, covered course, him yeah. Beck is great he's massive yeah Beck has also done it Wilco is a massive fan oh, Wilco's great yeah well Daniel Johnson you really everybody oh, right. everybody Who's everybody has there? to listen to Daniel <laughs> yeah. Johnson he's, very good he's a uh, an artist, an artist, I think, you know. Yeah. The eyes are great. They're getting there. They're getting there, yeah. Cause I should ask, I Julia, how am I doing, Julia? From Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> I did a meeting there, and I, just, I was following it all the time. To, to okay, the yeah, 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 nice. And yeah. there were no eyes at that point. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I, just, I did see that. Yeah, I was yeah, wondering that was from all the driving <laughs> I did. <laughs> great. Getting there, getting there. This is sort of... And normally, if I was doing this, just to give everybody kind of a, to make a big excuse for myself here, <laughs> I was normally doing this. I would wait till really the end to, to, to go for this. I nearly spent days just kind of dancing around the eyes, you know, mm -hmm. procrastinating is really what it is. But you think it's the hardest part? Well, I suppose I, I'd like to build the structure first. It's like laying the foundation before you drop in the, uh, the final little. But anyway, um, it's. It's not easy. Is that because the eyes are the most important part? I think so. The windows are so Absolutely. Totally. And it's such a part of the person's character. And your eyes are very piercing, so they got it's got to be right. It's from all the crowd control. Anyway, what happens is sometimes I paint paint things a little tip for portrait painters or anybody painting, particularly if you have to get a, light, a, a likeness. Sometimes if you're being very pernickety and you want to get everything, better to, to make an obvious mistake and then you'll know, because you'll see it ob an obvious mistake and then you'll know how to bring it back into focus, if that makes sense. But if yeah, like a, a measure, a guide. Yeah, like if I put in a, a piece of wood or something and I can obviously see, oh yeah, I'm a foot off. Well, then yeah. I just boom, cut the foot off and then mm -hmm. you have it. So I kind of treat it with a painting. I know I, so I tend to paint either too big or too, too big normally. And then I know, oh, I got to bring that back because I can see that I can see the mistake very clearly. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's sort of my tactic with when, it, when it's coming down to the fine tuning now of, um, of the likeness. Sometimes I have to. I mean, you, you, you said that you take days over something, or, but now you've got a few hours to do a portrait. Is, yeah. is, is, well, that's that, like is that easier? Yeah. Well, it depends. Sometimes it's, it's great because I just got to get on with it, you know? Yeah. And, um, you don't have time to yeah. procrastinate. I just got to get on with it, yeah. yeah. But I suppose there's always that niggling, oh, if I only had another sitting or if I had, you know, that sort of way. There's an interesting... Uh, philosophy of thought on, on procrastination oh yeah apparently all you're doing is your brain is so powerful is you're actually walking on it somewhere in your brain you're not doing nothing you're, right. you're, you're actually it's going right it's, it's percolating isn't it? and then when you get around to percolating perfectly 
So procrastination is really percolation. Maybe. I read something about that. I didn't say, I'll, I'll sleep on that. You hear that, Mom and Dad? All those years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was percolating all that yeah, time. Yeah, percolating. <laughs> it now all makes sense. But, it, but, it, but it, it, it is a good way to look at procrastination, particularly if you're a procrastinator. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, there was There's a, a lot of P's in those sentences. <laughs> there was a, a podcast on uh, TEDx, and there was a gentleman talking about procrastination. And he was saying, he's talking about how to deal with it, how to work with it, mm -hmm. and how to kind of um, focus yourself on work and how to bring your yourself to focus essentially because if you have an issue with procrastination you will immediately lose focus on whatever you're doing you will wander off yeah. doing other things because mm. your brain needs um, excitement and he, he said that um, a very funny he was actually really really funny like a comedic thing going on and he said uh, I, used, I supposed to do like this really important project so uh, I went on Google Maps and zoomed in uh, like uh, two kilometers above the you know earth and just scroll across to India. <laughs> okay. Scroll across to which? India, like just went across to India, you know, on the Google Earth, just as a form of procrastination, like kind of a putting off, inventable. You need to be doing this, but you're not doing it. All right. But th that's that's the thing. It's about knowing yourself and knowing your kind of a work patterns and how you focus and what you need to do to be able to be productive. Right. And yeah. you mentioned that you, Jerry, you wake up and then like you have, you know, you, you're active at night. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. many people are like this, you will be during the daytime in your nine to five kind of a schedule, you'll be doing very little during the day, but then five, sorry, the like an eight, nine o'clock comes in and you're the most productive human being in existence. Right. You've been storing it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Like night well, night. I know I've dreamt of having a circus for 30 years and it took that long to kind of like actually... Put it together. Yeah. Make it, yeah, it's kind of was a constant dream. I think, dream, I think dreaming again, if you're dreaming, dreaming something up. Mm. I'm sure you dreamt of being a painter or painting at some point before you became one. I didn't actually. No. Yeah, not to does it not to try and contradict your saying at all. So full of shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I do. I well, I suppose. I don't know. Why? Well, how did you get there then? Probably by default, really. Okay. Yeah, I mean, school was a disaster for me in some respects because. Um, I just wanted to draw, so uh, and paint. Yeah. And it was either that or that was the dream. So that I mean, so maybe you're right. Yeah. That was it was kind of there subconsciously all along. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't a deliberate thing. Like I, I, I don't know. It was. Uh, you had to have it. Yeah, but maybe subconsciously it was. They have um, Faith. because again, again, this is kind of like pre-civilization and back to now my family every time I say native they're like oh here he goes <coughs> but you know this this visualization that the Native Americans would, would teach yeah that basically when if you if you got to a new land and you had to like a, a place you had to find a shelter a fire and food mm -hmm. you know you, you don't run around looking for wood and shelter and and, and hunting stuff, they sit there and and just meditate and visualize where the shelter is, okay. where the wood is, right. yeah, yeah. where the food is, and they just and until they can clearly see in their mind's eye all those things. Okay. And then when they see them, they just get up and they and go they straight it. to yeah. the wood, straight to the shelter, straight oh. to the food. So I think that's. I mean, and, and uh, what, what I find very frustrating is this is stuff that they, they would teach their children about. Right. Whereas we've kind of lost that kind oh, of... Yeah, totally. You know, I whereas... Um, I, I think once you've lived, you realise, oh yeah, your negative thoughts leads to kind of 
negative results, you know, your oh, positive sure. thoughts. Yeah. You are what you think you are, isn't yeah. that what it is? You are what you yeah. think you are. We are being, like, the idea is that our civilization is called an amnesiac civilization. Because Amnesiacs. Yeah, because we forgot a lot. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's actually remembering what you've forgotten. It's kind of like not bit of a history, tens of thousands of years of human development, you know. Mm. But even so, not only like the, the history, but the, the, the like you mentioned, the Instinct. culture. Yeah. Instinct. Instincts. Um, there is a, a we, we are equipped with a lot of um, mechanisms, a lot of, uh, let's call it algorithms, to deal with the certain issues. Yeah. But through the development of our civilization, we've been put into an enormous amount of stress because back in the day, let's say, like, you know, you, you're saying native Indians and or like our ancestors. Yeah, indigenous they, people, yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't be dealing with that amount of stress that we're dealing now at the moment. Well, I don't know about that. Know about that. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, you have a woolly yeah, mammoth yeah, after you. Yeah, we don't have stuff trying to eat us, you know yeah, what I mean? It's like see, but that's the thing, is we would we would have the mechanisms to deal with it. But now at the moment, every day, you're dealing with a woolly mammoth or a saber-toothed lion trying to eat you. Oh, I forgot the phone. Oh, I'm in the traffic. Oh, I need to do this. I need to, I'm late. I can't have money for bills. And we have all this stress building up and pressuring us. Yeah. And we have no avenue to... I think it's the release of stress, yeah, is the kind of... And we don't have an avenue. We don't have the, the tools to, to, to cope with it. Well, like, for, do you jog? Would you, would you, is there, what's your kind of outlet? Do I look outlet? like a jogger? Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I like to walk. Windswept beard. I do like to walk. <laughs> I like to walk and walk, basically. You know, I like to yeah. build stuff. Hmm. You know, I like and that's, that's the method of self-realization yeah. because we have to we need to create something we need to be able to see the fruit of our labor yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> don't know where I'm going with this but anyway all I have to do is sit here <laughs> yeah. it's very hard for anyway. us it's very demoralizing of like you know like laborers work that you do day in day out with no visual progression oh. well I think that's maybe because I don't know how I'm really going there now but it's like it, they say and also and every native in a real true native tongue of which English is not one they say I never comes first in the sentence because okay. it's all about the community you know Can so yeah, like when sure. you I think in other languages they say the I think in, in our scale as well is the tree C I. Or it, it's in reverse. Your your the I is not important. The community yeah, is absolutely. And I think yeah. that's what we're maybe missing is yeah. is this too much self importance on well, that's on, it. on us rather than absolutely. the community. Yeah. It's a very fair point for when you think about it, um, we think that we're self sufficient. That in in a way we don't need other people because oh I can just go to a shop and I can pick it up from a shop. Yeah. I don't have to have a farm and farming you know pigs and and have you know field full of vegetables because I can just go to a shop. But in such a way we we're, we're excluding ourselves from the society. But we like you said we need it. That, that yeah, that's community. I think I think community. that's a one another thing COVID has kind of made quite real to us all is yeah. how we need each other, you know. Course, and, and it's all yeah. you know, we all need each other. Yeah. We all rely on each other. Yeah, because that's where the, our strength is. It's from the ability to pull in together. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Imagine all the great um, achievements of our civilizations and civilizations before us. Great monuments that are still standing in. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be a fan of monuments now. I would be a fan of trees, to be honest. Or nature. I think we need to get back to. I tell you, when I first came here to Ireland, stuff, you know? like in America, if you found a tree that was like 300 years old, there'd be a, a plaque around yeah. it, there'd be a monument or something. Mm. People would go there and they would. They, 
you know, recognize it. But here, it's like there's 300, 500 year old trees all over the place, you know. No, you're actually it's mistaken. Really? We're in I? trouble, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our trees are in trouble. Well, they are, yeah. yeah. But there's, like in the Phoenix Park, for instance, there's so many trees that are yeah, um, we're, we're, hundreds of years old. We're you know? lucky. Um, yeah, it's amazing, really. But it was a forest. That's true, yeah, the right. The whole country was a forest, and we don't have a lot, we don't have enough native trees, you know. We have, we have a real deficit of native trees. Uh, so it's kind of romantic, if you will, but like we need more. More of those trees, yeah. We need we need to plant tre native tree species. Native Irish trees, yeah. 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 Drastically. Hmm. We're in kind of trouble, and we also have. Um, some diseases which are threatening some of the trees to ash die back and stuff. So uh -huh. yeah, so trees, plant a tree, plant a tree. Mm. Plant as many trees as you can. Yeah. Native species definitely. I've been to Yosemite. Have you been to Yosemite? Yes, no. That's a place you should go. Yeah. Wow. What seems, was that like? Seems you've got a passport and everything, you know. <laughs> <coughs> um Amazing, is it? The yeah. trees over two thousand years old. There, you know, wow. two or three thousand years old. I think red some of the trees are. Oh yeah, the red ones. Sequoia, yeah. Yeah, wow. And they're just amazing. It's just the presence of them is really very. I've been to um, yeah. Redwood uh, National Park. Did you? Yeah. And Where was it? That's around Sierra Mountains. So the the Northern California. Northern California. Yeah. yeah. Uh, General Sherman, the wildest. Sheridan. Sherman, General Sherman. Sherman. Yeah, yeah American general. Yeah. yeah the, but the wildest uh, um, cedar. Oh yeah. It's quite yeah. Yeah, the wildest. One. It's uh, like uh, I think it's like 36 meters. Uh, oh meter. yeah. How old is that? Oh gosh. Uh, I I don't think it's the oldest. Um, I think it's the widest, and it's like three and a, three and a half thousand, four thousand. Yeah, thousand, I've uh, seen that tree. Yeah. It's uh, like being in that forest. Yeah, yeah that's oh, the sequoia. It's, it's yeah. insane. Amazing, isn't it? It, it yes. is absolutely. But the the the, the, the other thing, in in I saw a program there recently. There's a there's a kind of wild hippie guy up there, who's kind of uh, nurturing the seed of these sequoias because the sequoia, uh, you know, like you say, they lived to three and a half thousand years old, mm. and the amount of carbon dioxide that they eat up is amazing. Right. You know, more than an acre of, of pine. Wow. Yeah. In one tree. Wow. So why aren't we just planting these things all over the place? Yeah, you know, and there's this, there's no there's no support for this guy. It's just some crazy hippie up there in Northern California just trying to get these things into the ground. Wow. Have you seen the pine cones? You know, yeah. I have, yeah, massive pine cones. And they only release their seed when they Fire. On fire. Yeah, yeah. The proper fire. They wow. need the fire to actually try The fire, yeah, burns all the other trees. Yeah, amazing. Wow. I actually have a friend in um, Clomel who has right. a sequoia. Oh, does he? And I told him, you know, they need fire. And he said, he thought I was trying to set fire to a tree. <laughs> Not that I attempted to, but just, you know, he thought I was pulling his leg. He was trying to get me to pull my tree down. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, they're fireproof. Their bark is kind of very fibrous. Thick. Thick, yeah. and thick, but it's also a lot of like a small fibers in it, mm. so that's it. It actually allows it to burn into very high temperature, so it's almost fireproof. Wow, it's crazy! Yeah, yeah that's a great place to visit. Grand Canyon, have you been to the Grand Canyon? Well, I've never well, have you left New Jersey <laughs> <That's a good laughs> other than to come to Ireland? <laughs> I've been to Pennsylvania, yeah. Pennsylvania, that, that was exciting. That's it. Well, you see, I was spoiled. I went to New York City. So, yeah. People who were, you New know, York, who live in New York or study New York, yeah. it's, I don't know. I love New York. It's, it's a different animal. Yeah. So, it's changed. Oh, yeah. I was there recently and I was a little disappointed. What were you? Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's kind of a. Uh, Very expensive now. The beer was expensive oh and I gosh. don't remember it being. That expensive, yeah. Seven dollars for a beer or no, something, you know. Too bad. Just yeah. didn't it wasn't in New York, I remember, do you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, Grand Canyon and uh, Bryce Canyon. I also I haven't been to Bryce, I've been to Grand Canyon. Wow, it's Bryce is very mm. interesting. You can look up the pictures of Bryce Canyon. It's very, 
uh, very unique uh, rock formations there. Oh, wow. It looks like uh, a ball filled with needles. Very you still on the eye? Strange. Uh, I took a break just okay, to go back to your, your mustache there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to it. Yeah. Just uh, let me know so I can do the stare. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll let you know. This way you're not uh, you worn out. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, Jerry, let us know if you want to take a break. Yeah, absolutely, Jerry. Thank you. Seems I'm doing all the work. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Looking fabulous. <laughs> <coughs> now I'm kind of like uh, been looking in the mirror and not recognizing myself for quite a while now. Really? Well, I don't know. I, I haven't had. A, I've only stopped shaving since the lockdown. Oh, so you have the beard. <coughs> I haven't had this big beard, but this is a COVID statement. <laughs> Growing my own mask. <coughs> I'll just say, because uh, 15 year old, under 15 year olds also doing your portrait. They have a separate competition. Wow. So the Kildare Gallery is going to judge all that. So. Um, um, yes, and also don't, any negative <laughs> points that we're making about life. Oh, no, I meant because your beard. Oh, right. Yeah, because, uh, well, some of these kids might be very young and they, they see your beard. Like, I say, if my son saw you. Mean, you mean, like Santa Claus? A little bit, yeah. If my oh, son I saw did, you. My mother is calling me Santi. <laughs> oh yeah, well I, I don't mind being Santa Claus. Yeah, because uh, now my mother says you look like Santi. We say Santi in a Santi. That's right in our yeah. Yeah. Dublin accent. Santi. <coughs> she going, oh, you might get a bit of walk around Christmas. <laughs> I said, man, they won't. Yeah, well, you know they won't let Santa. You know you only have to touch the kids. You know what I mean? He's like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, no, that's not a good idea. <laughs> no, we will have Santa Claus. Everything's going to be great. Oh yeah, right. And how will the surely the young kids are up painting now? Yeah, they'd oh, be yeah. working right now. Yeah, I'd say okay. they are. Okay. So um, it's see, there's two separate competitions. There's one for the adults, one for the uh, the, the teenage the kids. You know. And um, all like ages, anything under. I like that. I, I actually That'd be love for you to um, see that. I, well, I love, I love. I guess I'm a big fan of naive art as okay, well. And yeah. I think, um, you know, uh, I just love the way children see things. Gosh, you yeah. know, um, yeah. and 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 basically have the confidence to go. That's that's what it looks like. Right. Yeah. You know, whereas we might be, I mean, adults might be a little bit more critical about mm -hmm. what we do. Oh, sure. Yeah. And, and maybe compare it with other artists and other people where a kid will just go. That's it, yeah. You know? I know, it's, it's, it's seriously talented uh, teenagers as well, you know, amazing artists. You remember doing art in school? Which, yeah, I, yeah. Was, I, I, I loved art in yeah. school, yeah. Art and English were my favorite. Those are your two favorites, yeah? Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's just, I think about my favorites because that's what I was best at, really. Mm. Okay, just uh, I'm putting in the finer little details now with the eyes, doing the eyes back now. Say something. Say something. Were you going? No, were you going to say something? No, I don't think so. I was thinking. I was. I was actually wondering. Am I regretting anything I've said? <laughs> Not at all. <coughs> no, I was. I, uh, oh, you painted. Um, who was last year's? Oh, David Norris. David yeah. Norris. Yeah. The yeah. character. Yeah, oh gosh. Yeah. Plenty to say. Oh, David, yeah. Well, no, he didn't actually. Did I he think, not? Uh, he was told well, to kind of told to be quiet because oh, uh damn. there were <laughs> there were seven of us yep. painting him he must have hated that i, I, I think <laughs> yeah i ain't for anybody really you know to sit there it was for four hours too so mm. it was uh yeah i suppose now say for instance i was doing this normally you know 
the first day is great get to know you maybe by day two I might say to you now okay um, yeah just have a sign yeah just sign the session mm -hmm. so it's all part of it you know <clears throat> but yeah it's uh, that was I'd say it was difficult for him yeah he's a good guy though oh yeah I think he's the oldest running um, senator senator yeah Okay for a break at all? Or? No, I'm good. All That's right, yeah. uh, another ten minutes, maybe. Mm -hmm. I may drink a drink of water. So I'm imagining now, now hopefully, hope you don't think I have illusions of grandeur, but I'm just, I just thought for a second there, all those, all that royalty over the centuries that would have had to sit there while their portraits were being painted. Oh yeah. You're in good company now. <laughs> yeah, so I guess I'm in good company, not that I'm a royalist at all, but, uh, but no, I just wonder how, like, um, how they liked it. Mm. They probably didn't, many of them. Well, uh, I mentioned Velasquez, that painter mm -hmm. I admire. He apparently had a um, a very double. fond... Did they have doubles? Sorry. How do you mean a double? <coughs> like, did the royalty have doubles for their bodies? Oh, their, oh he did, yeah. yeah. I, he would get somebody to stand in for the uh, the body. Yeah. yeah, he did that a few times, yeah. Right, okay. Um, he did have sort of a mannequin in the studio, and he got the clothing. But uh, the king at the time... Uh, Philip the Fourth. They apparently had a great relationship. They kind of um, yeah. Well, he was a big supporter. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, you'd wonder though if they liked it. If they you know. But I'd say he was one king. I think he enjoyed it. I think he it was a time for him to. But he him. but he he obviously loved Velasquez as, as as company. I think he did. Yeah. So this could be a regular thing for us then. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's just the beginning. <laughs> I've got lots of looks as well, so. <coughs> yeah, I saw a picture of you without your beard. It was kind of. Yeah, no, this is just yeah. a lockdown there. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, it's yeah, a lockdown, yeah. what you call a folly. You have the whiskers, though, usually. I have the whiskers. Yeah. It suits you, though. It really uh, suits yeah. you. Thank you. If this is me coming off the mountain, nobody's seen me for like six months. Yeah. Well, no better way then. No better way to make your reappearance back. Yeah, I'm back. Get it painted. I'm back. His three hundred portraits. <laughs> while I was away. How are we on time anyway? Yeah. We Michael. have uh, time is quarter to nine. A quarter to nine, okay. I wonder if um, we got the okay to go to 9.30. Are you still okay to go to 9.30? I can go to okay. 9.30, yes. So there's a possibility we could go to 9.30, everybody. No, it's already set in stone. Oh, it is? Yeah, oh, okay, we're going. That's it. <laughs> it's set in stone. It, it might be nice just suggesting that. Yeah. Zoom into the painting at one point, just because the yeah, eyes sure. have really developed. Okay. But you can't see it from, at least on my phone. Yeah. It's too far. Okay. I, don't, I don't know what. Yeah. You can see the way the hatch is now invisible from the lights on your eye when you've done that. It looks really good. It's getting there. Yeah. Um, it's really getting there. So far, so good. Um, yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm tempted. I started this portrait without putting anything in the background. Oh, yeah. And I'm tempted to put something in the background. Um, my worry is that it's going to throw everything off, so I have to be careful now mm -hmm. uh, what to do. So th that is sort of when the light changes, 
you have to be very cautious to make a radical change like that. So anyway, we have till 9.30, so I might decide, but um, yeah, we'll see where that goes. You might have enough to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <coughs> It, it must be very scary to kind of, you know, you can make a move that will just change the oh direction gosh. of everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean by the lights. When you see people superimposing heads on shoulders, or the, the lighting's wrong, and they manipulate focus. Right. Yeah. You know, you know yeah. it's not there. But, 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 but there's a lot to be said about the moon landing. Is this something oh, wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> are, are you a believer in the moon landing? Man, I'm not even getting involved. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, I am a believer. <coughs> I've got a son who wants to go to Mars, so I oh, can't, wow. I can't awesome. dispute the moon landing. <coughs> <coughs> I have a son. Well, set when he's older, Mars, Mars might be the next. Uh, you know, 16 years old, he wants to go to. Mars. It might be the next. Uh, and it's really nice, you know. There's, Corfu there's or a, something. There's a lot of young people who are setting their sights on Mars. Oh, I think yeah. that's that's. Not a bad thing. Yeah. It's very harsh. Well, I've looked at a bit of it. Yeah, I have. You have to find a little cave for yourself. <laughs> yeah, you have to find a little cave for yourself. And I think, you, I think the minimum is three years or something like that Ooh. in a cave. Yeah. Three years to what to get to Mars? No, it's when when you <laughs> once you get there or something, you have to stay. Oh, for three years. You ain't coming back for like a, a while. Why is that? Just because of the... Uh, Look, ask, ask the scientists. That's amazing. Look, I could be wrong as well. I always say, you should chew what I say and try not to swallow. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that would be something, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah I know, there's, I know you've, maybe it's a year and a half, which of you are basically once you land, you ain't getting off it for... Can't go, hang on, <laughs> I forgot something. The atmosphere is dead. Did you bring the camera? <laughs> Yeah, there's um, but the the storms and stuff like that. But but you know they wow got their mindset on it. Oh yeah, mm. they reckon within uh, the next while we'll be holidaying on the moon. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Mm. Don't know what you do up there, but uh. <laughs> lockdown could be just like <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of training for us all. You know? be lockdown in the background there. Shop yeah, <laughs> big one today, wasn't it? Has it been announced yet? Yeah. So we're aw awaiting an announcement. Yes, and is it from, from midnight? Oh, from from midnight so tonight. Finish by midnight. You, you're staying yeah, here for the next three weeks. I'll well, stay here for the next three weeks <laughs> and live off the pizza well, on the day. We finish nine thirty. The pub still be open, <laughs> and then. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. Will has the lighting changed dramatically? Well, a little bit, yeah. It's certainly changed. I mean, pe I'm sure people watching at home will have noticed. Yeah. But uh, you know, that's it was all. Not a problem. Well, I mean, because the, the skin would change color with the light. Change, oh, it did. You know? It did. Yeah. But you know, I don't. Um, I'm not going to complain. You know, yeah. it's, it's a pleasure to paint you, and be with you. So. Uh, <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> and to you know, to paint in this room. But I suppose yeah, if it was a, a, like, say, if it was something, a commission or something like that, I would. Uh, do a few sessions. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this where this might be one of them. You know what I mean, kind of thing. Like a practice run. Well, will this lighting work for you? You know. So. Um, but, uh, I'm just gonna break in. So okay, we've covered religion. We've covered art, music. Is there anything else we the moon, Mars? Any no, other no. questions? Are there any questions for people? No, there's no more questions. There's people no probably uh, come to bed now. <laughs> They're not asked questions about philosophy in the moon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's been scary, some of the subtopics we've uncovered here. <laughs> it's very interesting, though, you compare a portrait to a photograph of yourself, you know. Mm. I mean, have you ever been happy with a photograph of yourself or something that really caught you or um, well I mean I guess part of my job is doing you know having promotional photographs yeah. and I do like brand a lot of what I do myself yeah 
So, um, I mean, I have a great photographer, Kira Drennan, who uh, goes. I, I run a stage in, in, in Electric Picnic. Right. Uh, it's Ireland's biggest. Uh, arts and music festival. Sharon, by the way, she's a huge. She's she's up at the front all the time. Uh, yeah, so yeah. a lot of people come to. It's like a home away from home. So it's a yeah. bit like Glastonbury Fringe. Okay. A lot of crazy stuff goes on there. A lot of, a lot of circus people. A lot of wow. Yeah. Um, sideshow performers. It's called the Jerry Fish Electric Sideshow. Wow. Yeah. So, um, but Kira's there, taking photographs all the time. So we get yeah. a lot of dynamic kind of live shots. And so I'd, I'd have to admit, yeah, so I'm very fussy. Sure, yeah. Uh, fussy about with the lighting or the... Uh, or the just uh, the image, I image. guess. You know, I don't like my image. You know, it's not something I kind of like. What, you're it's facing kind of it? A, it's, a, it's a kind of a occupational hazard having to kind of put yourself out there, do you know? Oh, yeah. I yeah. think that is for a lot of... I think a lot of performers are actually uh, quite introvert. Right, I'm sure, yeah. you know? Imagine. You lose Get, getting lot. past the age of 27 is basically the sort of time. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I got a book called Shots in the 70 for Christmas about 10 years ago. And one page was called Untimely Rockstar Deaths. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're all around 27. Yeah, 27. That's the age. That's yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. 27 club, it's called. <coughs> yeah. Or yeah. like, oh, club 27. Yeah. No, 27 club, yeah. Wow. So I've, I've, I've managed to do that yeah. last year. I, <laughs> I covered that milestone. I'm, I'm laughing now, all the way to my forties. There you go. No, it's, it's just you know, it's it's kind of part of part of the thing. You know. I mean, I look, you know, photographs. Uh, uh, you know, I was thinking of that Beckett. Oh yeah, very famous. famous. One yeah. shot, you know. Oh yeah. And we were talking about photographs. I mean, you know, people take hundreds of photographs. You need one. That's all you need, huh? Yeah. One. Yeah. There's a great documentary. You may have seen it. I don't know, five, ten years ago, about a lady in Chicago uh, called Vivian Meyer. Mm. She was a nanny. She was very odd, but extremely talented street photographer. Mm. And she didn't publish any. Some dude just came across her negatives and undeveloped rolls, like That's about tens of thousands of stuff. And they I are heard about it. I heard about it. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I think that I, I'm a big fan of like Candice photography. So what's the the French? Uh, Dushno is it? Dushno. I don't know the French name. He's done the kiss and he. Yeah. He's doing the, you know, all those, all those French cafes oh, yeah. and all. So yeah. I do, li I like, I like artistic Photograph. photographs. Yeah. So, so I do like the setting, you know, actually setting up a photograph a or, yeah. or the live performance mm -hmm. kind of moments, you know, the candid kind of moments. You know, Chapu does the photographs for the waterfalls. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Wow. Oh, he's brilliant, Michael Scott. He's, uh, yeah, he's got a great face too. Uh, now yeah. as well, yeah, it's a, it's yeah. A great face. But I think your own image is kind of like. Did you like? Do you like your image? Um, my own face, you mean? Yeah. I, I yeah. I mean, not in a but vain you, way. But I'm do you have you painted yourself? I have like a lot. Yeah, a lot of self portraits So you've got. Yeah. But not yeah. out of vanity, just out of... No, but you've got to, to practice. But, yeah. you, but, you, but you've got to enjoy... I guess maybe you've got to kind of see yourself outside of yourself or something. Um, yeah, I suppose so. You kind of see, but... Uh, I remember when I was younger, my mother used to say, you always make yourself look so angry. Or, uh, so, uh, <laughs> you know, or some people would say, you look so angry all the time. Yeah, because I guess we've all... You know, I, I mean, I love the fact there is no such thing as a rainbow. Every everybody's rainbow is just it's just a, a, it's an optical right. illusion from it's your there. from colour on your eyes. So everybody's rainbow is their rainbow. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I guess you see yourself, yeah. you know. But then again, a, a portrait is is a reverse m image of yourself in a mirror. So if I were to do a true self portrait, I have to set up two mirrors. 
at a right angle. Right. And then look at yourself. That's something you might want to try it. Look at yourself uh, with two mirrors. Two position. of me. Two. You want me to deal with two of me, Will? <laughs> you might right. So you, okay. Sorry. Right. So you get a mirror. And then another mirror at a right angle. And then just sit yourself in between, and you'll see how other people see you. Yeah. It's a mirror that you shave it. It's, it's you not a true it. depiction. Okay, it's, yeah. the yeah. it's the wrong image, really. Yeah. It's the wrong way around. Yeah. We've met before. We not. We must have. It seems like we have. Yeah. Don't know. I think. Um, yeah. I guess I'm like a lot of people. We beat ourselves up a lot, you know. I think. Uh, I, 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 I'm quite involved in a lot of mental health charities, you know, and helping out mental yeah. health charities, because I think, you know, it is a big issue how we talk to ourselves, you know. Mm. You know I guess it's keeping a balance. You, you, you can't love yourself too much. Mm. But well, it's very yeah. important not to hate yourself. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Lee once said, uh, I like you Bruce. Know? Sorry? I like Bruce. He, he, he said uh, in one of the interviews, that he gave, he said, you're not supposed to think about yourself wrong, but even on a joke. Oh, yeah. Is that what he says? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's important to, to not. I think it was, uh, you know, especially with young people as well, you know, when you're talking to yourself and you're in a thought, you know, would you let somebody else talk to you like that? Gosh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, and yeah. I think it's good to think that way, you know. Treat others as you would know, yourself would like to be treated. Yeah, but I think you kind of, you can really beat yourself up. You know? Yeah. So, I, 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 you know, I don't know. I see my image. I don't know. You but see other people in your image as well. You know. But a lot of musicians be like that. They kind of it's just to put yourself out there, to put yourself forward to perform. Would that be kind of a? It wouldn't. It's not. It's come natural to any musician, or does it to some? I do, I I think there's always an introvert in yeah. in in anybody that performs. Oh, that that maybe one? is that the, 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 the part that creates the music? The introverts. Uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, maybe, but I do, I just think it's I, I find I've a different complete the person on stage is a completely different person to off stage. Yeah. You can't be the same. If I was the same person I am on stage. Yeah. This room would be wrecked. You oh, know what yeah, I mean? It's a, yeah. <coughs> you could not live with that person. Yeah, you know? right. It's not possible. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm on stage. I'm supposed to be exciting and right. in charge and in control. Yeah. You know. Whereas in, in life, home. in life, I've got to stand in the bus queue. You know, I've got to relax. <laughs> you know, so I do think it's. Uh, I mean, it's something I miss now. I haven't performed in six months or so. It's something I do miss. And I always tell my audience that it's, you know, the, the question th thank you for the therapy, you know. <laughs> There's a question for, for Jerry um, from Mark. Uh, what's your favorite Brian Eno album? Any Eno stories? I, I, don't, I, I don't, Brian's going to kill me, but I don't have any Brian Eno albums. But I do love Brian Eno. I love Roxy Music. I love, uh, I love, Roxy. I love his brain. I love I love I love Eno's brain, you know. I love I love how he treats music. I mean, I think I said to something there recently while we've been sitting here about Eno said, talking about releasing material. I think he's got a lot of stuff on his computer as well that he hasn't put out there because it's, you don't feel like giving it to other people sometimes, you know. It's it's right. open for criticism yeah. and everything. But I know people that have worked with him as a producer. And uh, I know there's one great tip he gave to someone is that like a song is the vocal. And often we go into a studio to record and we put down what is called a guide vocal and then everybody plays along to it. Right, you know, okay. so you're not giving everything while you're recording. That's actually the wrong way to do it. Okay. You right. should give everything every time because everybody will try and get up to your thing. And you listen to all the great songs, it's really a vocal performance, you know? So yeah, I'm a massive fan of Eno, but I don't have any of his records. I was into yeah. Alan Parsons, he was just loved his, I don't know, engineering or something. Just yeah, yeah. Purity of sound he did for mm. Pink Floyd, and his own stuff. 
you know, I think recording back then as well was so yeah. good, you know, the, 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 the machines, you know, the, the analog yeah. machines were, were um, incredible, you know. Mm-hmm. Neat so desks and microphones. Get a short break. Oh well, yeah, yeah, maybe. You're okay. Well, how are you doing? You alright? Yeah, right? brilliant. Yeah. Another five minutes will take. We'll take another five. We'll make it a short break. And no problem. Yeah. Nine o'clock now. Nine o'clock. Bill is taking the plunge. He's doing the background. Yeah, I'm just. Um, I'm. And then I could. I, I could take my break. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> I'm carving your your. Yeah, I know. You need my aura. I understand. <laughs> no. I know. I know how this works. Well, did you well. ever try to digital painting? Uh, no, I I uh, I'm a complete complete oh. other analog guy. Yeah, I just I don't know. I I've seen a lot of great digital work, and I know it's brilliant. And but I'd be a liar if I said uh, it's great. Because yeah, Hock- 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 Hockney <laughs> is 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 doing. T- Oh yeah, and that's great. Right. That's great for him, you know. Um, yeah. and so, but I just, I don't know. Um, I guess I'm an old fart that way. I just love analog old work, you know, paint and ink and pencil. And I just mm. feel like, the, see, the digital is not even real. It's not a real thing. Whereas even a drawing, it's actual graphite on an actual sheet of paper. And there was an actual um, moment in time with the artist's spirit went through the pencil, went through the graphite, and hit the paper. Yeah, and that magic, I, I, I'm i sorry, but I don't see that happening with the, the, the digital, you know. Um, I don't, and I'm sure people, scientists will say, well, you know, it actually. No, it, it does seem odd even as a punter, yeah, you know. Yeah, I just <laughs> can't, I don't know, I, I will personally won't accept it as for my own, for myself. But if somebody else does it and they're doing great, that's fantastic for them. I won't judge them in, them in that regard. Particularly if they can make a living doing it, you know. But um, I suppose for myself, I just can't swallow that pill. I just won't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just won't. Uh, and it probably because my training. Um, I was a pre-internet kid, you know. Maybe that has something. But to do I with think it. if your favorite painter is Velasquez. Velasquez. Well, well, and then, you know. <coughs> well, then I don't think digital is your. Just bag. can't, you know. No. I don't know. But you know. People, my worry is that over time the tree huggers, and I, I say that with complete love for tree huggers. I'm a tree hugger. I do, I say that. <laughs> if I say, well, you know, paper is, uh, you know, your pencils and paper you're working on is you're cutting down trees and all this. And I, 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 I stock up on sketchbooks because <laughs> I'm worried. You know what I mean? In some ways, I feel like we're going towards. Extra capacity oh there. gosh, yeah. I stock up on paint. And, you know, artist friends of mine in the States do the same. Lead white was a um, it's like the gold for painters now I don't have it with me now but it is the best white to use but it's as toxic as anything and it was it was it was hard to get for a while but so, some people now um, a guy in England he they're starting to supply it but it was you can't order it here is in, it in mined by small children or well you see <laughs> <coughs> from the, the white caves of that's right <laughs> I don't know. The cliffs of Dover. It, it's yeah. very toxic, and I think you know, it has yeah. a bad reputation of being in the old buildings and uh, the lead paint. Lead paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is dangerous, but you know, for painters who use it in a very responsible way, it's not. So, uh, but I think there's a little bit of that happening, mm-hmm. and um, I'd be one of the old kind of rhinoceroses who's going to say that my grave, I'm going to have a pencil in my hand. So, yeah, I don't know, but you know, my hat's off to. People who work in the like a David Hockney or somebody like that. You know, I, I, even as a punter, I can't imagine. Well, it, the thing about digital is, this sorry for the rant there. I didn't no, but it to. can be reproduced. Yeah. Forever. So that wh- where is the master? Yeah. Well, what is the master? Oh yeah, the original. Yeah, what is the original yeah. copy of a digital work of art? That's what I would find it difficult to kind of. Yeah. Get my head around. Absolutely, yeah. Now having a nice reproduction of Vermeer's Girls Curly. I mean, sure. I mean, they I have, have a copy of that in my own house. So I mean, even back to animation and stuff. When you see those, oh, yeah, those the old Max fashioned animation, brilliant. So if you can, or Pinocchio, so you know, Disney's Pinocchio. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. they, 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 they don't seem to be able to make that. But you know, no matter how many computers they have, you know. Well, yeah, everybody says, well, it's easier, it's quicker, it's faster. But you say, what, where's the joy? I mean, Disney employed so many artists. He employed so many, you know, or Don Bluth, he employed so many artists to craft mm -hmm. the ship. That was a job for somebody to paint those cells in, or, you mm -hmm. know. And I think that is brilliant. Well, I've yet yeah. to see a Pinocchio, you know. Oh, I know, I have it. Shadows. Idea. Yeah. No. It's it's hard to compare some of those great works to. Uh, but, you know, some of the modern stuff is brilliant, like the Book of Kells, I'm sure that was. But I think he does it all the old fashioned way. Well, it's it, it even more. Uh, Persopolis, have you seen Oh, that? yeah. that's Was that done the old way as well? Yeah. Uh, no, that, that's probably mo mo fairly modern. Is it? Mostly yeah. black and white, you know. Okay, yeah. That's some great modern animations. But yeah, that was about the Iranian story, wasn't it? Persopolis, yeah. Persopolis, yeah. I think. Yeah, Iran, Iraq, Iran? Iran, Iran. yeah, the Shah there. But uh, I don't know, you know, everyone's going to have their own opinions on that. But it's like it is what it is. It's uh, It'd be interesting what the future holds, you know, for. Well, I, I think there's room for everything, isn't there? Absolutely, it? yeah, absolutely. Probably just burn many bridges by saying that lot. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> but, look, I don't know. It's, uh, well, I mean, I recorded, uh, obviously, the same analogue with an emotional fish of the first band. Oh, yeah. The rolls tape, 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 and I still have... Oh, the then, then when I came back, I still have two-inch tape that yeah. I recorded yeah. on. But then you're, for us anyway, we're then transferring it to a digital medium anyway. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's true. And yeah. now, but then it, what's happened in the music industry is now we have uh, this bass on in a digital form that we couldn't produce on tape. You know, oh, you can get okay. much lower bass because. Basically, the bass frequencies take up more tape space, you know? I see. So yeah. we had lovely warmth of bass in analog, but there's now, yeah, you listen to like Tyler, Tyler the Creator and stuff like that. The, well, bass, it the bass notes that they can record is just, we couldn't do it. We, there's actually a, a single we recorded uh, with Joe Hawley, U2 sound engineer, and there was a real boom, a huge boom. Except for when I went out on the radio, it'd go every time it came to the track. Because <laughs> nobody had the speakers that could take it anyway, you know? So, like, you know, so I guess, you know, it just keeps changing, keeps rolling, this thing keeps rolling, you know? What? Standing up for paint is still on the cave wall. Well, that's it. It, it is. Yeah, it's still on the wall, absolutely. Yeah. Tens of thousands of years. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. Now that was a good interlude for a break, I thought. Yeah. And on that yeah. note, five minutes? Five minutes, absolutely.
Ranala Dharma. I don't know why I'm saying Ranala. Yeah, the, the, the Ranala people say Ranala. Do they? Yeah. Well, that's, I'm glad because now I can defend it. Oh, I, I pronounce it. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Ranala's house was in Ranala. It really? Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to tell her that. So yeah. now I don't have to change my habit at all. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I speak the native tongue. That's right. Um, but so she's grand and she, she, you know, she wants to move in with friends in, 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 in North Strand. I'm like, oh, look, I've got you this place, you know what I mean? We're in a friend's house and uh, she put, it's not, it's, it's a bit of a sad time for them, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? All the colleges now are going online. She's moved up to Dublin. She wants to get out of the house and live. Mm. Anyway, let's go live. Are we on live? We, are we live now? We're live now, yeah. yeah. Talking about me, don't it's giving, talking about me personal stuff. <coughs> it's a nice feedback, by the way, from Shu. I'm sure Mike can tell you. Is it good? Yeah. yeah it's That's good. Well, as long as everyone's enjoying it and. Uh, so this is the last sitting now, I think. What time are we at now? We're at 20 past. Okay, so we have basically 10 minutes or so left, so. Yeah, so. Okay, so 10 and so, do we? Or, yeah, and so, yeah, no, I'm good. Okay, great, so we, this, this more or less is the last sitting then, more, or, all right, yeah. see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, any wine at this point? No. <laughs> yeah, wine, more wine for, the, more wine for Will. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, that could be another part of your perfection program. Yeah. <laughs> Have the drinks to make sure. Yeah. What, what did you say? Oh, yeah, like if you, if you can uh, <laughs> do my portrait while drinking wine, that <laughs> should be an interesting one. Not for you kids now. What's his name does that? Doesn't he? Graham Norton, doesn't he? I mean, he's interviewing. Graham Norton. Yeah. yeah. Well, is it, he, Graham has his own brand of wine now, doesn't he? And gin. And yeah, everything. whiskey or gin. That's right. I think he gives some to Dogs Trust or something. I think. Okay. Yeah, very big bottle, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> right. So we're, uh, we'll go back to music then. <laughs> music. So in anything, um, if lockdown was over tomorrow morning, mm. what would be the first project you'd get on with? To, would it be well, I've missed picnic? all the summer festivals, so like would there we be have a fall to wait festival? till next year for them anyhow. Would there be a fall festival or anything happening? Uh, yeah, but actually the next big festival I'd be doing will be Halloween. We have a very big, oh, okay, great. and it's, it's growing, yeah. really growing in Ireland. And so I've been involved in a festival up in Trim Castle okay. yeah. uh, called Puka Festival. Yeah, right. So Puka is, I think, I think we are reclaiming the, uh, we created Halloween. I think, I think it's an old Irish festival. Oh. And there's just, just so many wonderful past few years like the year before i was in derry did a tv program there um a live broadcast a halloween and in derry is probably the, the record, it's the biggest halloween festival in the world is it really man yeah. woman and child in in in, in, in derry wow. dress up everyone dresses up and they all come out and they have big fireworks they're gonna miss that this year oh yeah, gosh, yeah. so uh halloween would probably be the next one and then and then the Christmas tour but I do a lot of I do a thing called the songs and tall tales of Jerry Fish okay. which is a kind of small intimate uh, theatre show and that's a lot of fun that, that I've actually I guess through doing that I've realized you never stop learning you know I've learned a lot of it. although I've been playing the band nearly 40 years yeah I just realized it since the 80s it's like you're still learning, you know, I'm still learning my craft, you know, and what, what makes people, you know, I love, I love, I think my job is always, whether I'm playing with a band or, or just a pianist, is to, is to be somehow the, the character in the middle of the situation that unites it all, the band and the audience, you know, and then my job is done when it's all one big melting pot. So I'm not, I'm a little bit, 
not nervous, but a little bit kind of wondering how I'll get back. My, I mean, my gig is usually getting people to hug each other, oh, yeah. to, right. to kind of meet each other as strangers, breathe on each other, you know. <laughs> so, like, I don't know what I'm going to do, to be honest. I, you know, I mean, I've seen some photographs of gigs and it looks like one flew over the cuckoo's nest, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, and I'm not sure if I can cope with that, you know. Nice, yeah. I was thinking of creating dancing masks or, you know, that I could bring people together. I mean, my job is bringing people together, not yeah. separating. Them. Sure. Yeah. So it, 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 it does, it is kind of switch you, you know, it's going to switch me into a, a so I'm already thinking of, of, I think, I know theatres are talking about a lot of one man shows and stuff. Right. Have you ever done the straight theatre, the straight acting? Not really. Would it ever interest you to do something like uh, that? Not, I, 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 I've got a lot of friends in the mus film industry and, yeah. and it's kind of like a or even just play. strange when it's not. Um, I've, I've done a little bit but not much so I've never really, uh, no I've never kind of, no. probably too self-conscious. Really? You know? no. Yeah and, uh, and, and I'm not great with rejection so, <laughs> so I don't know how good an actor I'd be you know. <laughs> It was a great program on not too long ago. It was, I think, uh, was it Brendan Behan or somebody like that? But they were using people from the inner city Dublin as who I, I think had ever acted, and mm. they just trained them and made them perform. Was it Brendan Behan or no? It was Sean Ca Sean O'Casey. It was a Sean O'Casey play. O'Casey, okay, yeah. And it was a part of Dublin. Um, I think by Ring's End. Yeah. During okay. the time of the War of Independence or uh, yeah. the uprising, maybe. Uh -huh. And uh, he wrote a play about while that was going on yeah I think uh, yeah and it so was the tenements yeah yeah and it was brilliant to see these people Planet of the Stars that's it? the one the Planet yeah. of the Stars yeah and yeah. Uh, I thought gosh if these people can if they can get something can be tapped into these people and they were, could express themselves on stage like that yeah, yeah. it's wonderful fantastic so well, was that ever the storytelling isn't yeah. it again you know yeah. I mean I enjoyed writing a uh, theatre piece I did. I always felt I didn't really finish it but it's like I imagined uh, that my mother was a mermaid you know and I kind of like I got into this and I'm descended from pirates that were hung on Misery Hill. And I had a lot of fun kind of imagining uh, really my descendants you know. Right, and I, yeah. I, I During the break there I caught a glimpse of your wonderful portrait and it's like um, you know I think you're kind of a lot of your ancestors are in your Oh yeah, in your blood, in yeah. you, mm -hmm. you know, and in your face and in your features, and, you know. Absolutely, yeah. I'd imagine it's quite therapeutic to paint, though. It can be, yeah, absolutely. Um, sometimes it's just hell, but you know, uh, it which is also therapeutic. Yeah, I suppose it is. Yeah. But um, fireworks going yeah, on. Yeah, that great. Bank. Fantastic. Yeah. Unless the revolution has started, <laughs> and we're missing it. <laughs> well, Jerry, what did you do during the revolution? <laughs> I was having my portrait painted. <laughs> to uh, an honour to have a portrait done. Wow. Um. Like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of something I kind of know distinguished people had in the past. What about members of your family have you painted them? Oh yeah, they've all been uh, victims of my brush. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that right, everybody? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, it's funny, we have a portrait, growing up in the house, we had a portrait of my father's ancestor, the first, the first of our, our, my father's side to come to America. And uh, What's your surname? It's Nathan's. Nathan's? Yeah. Nathan's, yeah. <coughs> from, where's that from? Then? Well, he was from England, the guy, but uh, I think before he went to England back in the, uh, before the revolution, I think he came from Amsterdam or 
Holland or someplace like that. Okay. But uh, he was an English guy, uh, or uh, you know, uh, maybe Welsh English, that sort of. And he came, but where? Yeah, I think that name comes from somewhere in in Amsterdam. Nathan's. Yeah. And when he came to America, he fought in the revolution, but he got his portrait done, and we have it in the house. Wow. And it's the spitting image of my dad, with these sort of uh, you know mutton chops and um, you know, okay. kind of a the fashion of the day. Yeah, but it's the. Uh, <coughs> It's my father just sitting there, you know, it's crazy. It's be something. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, I'm very like my father. Actually. Are you? Yeah. 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 You'd be more like your dad than well. Yeah. 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 And how many are there in your family when you were growing uh, up? I'm the eldest of six uh, oh, wow. siblings. Six. Like, uh, One of six. Two brothers and three sisters. Oh, okay. Well, <clears throat> You're the eldest. Wow. Yeah, the eldest. And he, he's very close to them all. Or? Yeah, we're yeah. very close family. Yeah. And they all in Ireland? And no, I have a sister in Israel, and I have a uh, brother-in-law in, in uh, where she is in near Manchester. All oh, right. Yeah. And then the other three are in Dublin. That's yeah. You've got some of them nearby. Yeah, two sisters. Yeah, I have two sisters living near my mother, which is great. You know, my father oh, yeah. <coughs> near Rings End, so. And uh, would they be critics of your work? Would they tell you, oh, I like that piece of music? or uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, they, they, they're supportive. I yeah. mean, my, my, my mother was, I don't think, my mother was, uh, doesn't really, I mean, I'm probably the same with my own kids. I don't really care what they do as long as they're happy. Yeah. You know, she's never kind of, uh, one, you know, wanted me to be anything, really. Mm. You know, I mean, oh, my father, really, just happy. Right. You know, I guess they worry about financial security when I kind of yeah. down the road of Gosh, yeah. being in a band. Was it hard start first starting starting off when you were in a band, touring and traveling and everything? Was it? Uh, I love travel. Yeah. so I've never know. The, the first tour bus I ever saw, I thought was the most incredible invention I'd ever seen. You know, like a a, a bus with a bed with beds in it. Wow, that's a great idea. You know, you go to bed and wake up in a new place, you know. Was, I loved it. And where were you touring? Loved what was touring. That? Toured all over America, Scandinavia, Europe. Wow. And I just, you know, so loved it, loved it. You know, I feel very privileged to have done that, you know. And we played a lot of... Um, Gigs that no longer exist, like CBGBs. Oh, in New York, yeah. 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 It's not around here, it's right. No, yeah. CBGBs. And another one in Philadelphia called JC Dobbs. Okay. And then there's a few that still exist in Canada. There's one called The Horseshoe. The Horseshoe? I think Hank Williams had slept in the dressing room for like uh, really? two weeks or something. Okay. Know, so, or months. It's been. So, I mean, that's what I loved about North America, was all these bands had passed through it, you know, like right. the doors. And oh, yeah. Is there a, a city in, in the states or Europe that you, there's a lot of a lot of uh, exciting things happening musically, like, like in in America or, I, or in Europe, a, a city where there's a lot kind of bustling with like it. now? Yeah, I think Berlin is kind of offering a lot. I think I think just uh, uh, to the, all the artistic community, you know, yeah. for some reason that seems really vibrant. Um, <coughs> I don't know. It kind of. I mean, I think I was very lucky to be in a band in the nineties. I think the nineties were really, really a vibrant time, you know. To be working and touring. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so much happening. It yeah. was kind of a lot of. I guess it was a lot more around. You know, it was less pop culture as well. You had the grunge. Oh yeah. Bands like Nirvana. Yeah. Pearl Jam and stuff like that. And then uh, on the in England, you had like the Happy Mondays and the Stone Roses. And so there were two big mm -hmm. movements happening at the right. same time, you know. So it just was a very exciting time. I mean, now in Dublin, there's some great... I mean, Dublin's got some great music happening. Ireland has some great music happening. Mm. Great band, Bitch Falcon, Fontaine's, you know, Mother Capital. Some mm. great bands. Yellow Queens. Some great women making music now. It's just wonderful. Is there? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of... 
great honor being there. Joe Castlin, you know Joe Castlin is just doing something now. Joe Castlin. He's kind of graffiti and photography. Oh, very good. Yeah. He's got something launching tonight, Reset. Okay. Oh, so yeah, it's, it's very That's vibrant. Going on. Yeah. I mean, I like collaborations. I like. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, I like, I like what we're doing now. You know. Oh, like sure. Okay. Great. Yeah. Mixing different mediums, you know. Mm. People from different walks of life. I'll have to write you a song with. <laughs> the painter well what what music what was the like when you were younger you, what was your music that you were into that would say I want to be a musician what was it what were you Mark, into it was one artist it was Mark Boland and T-Rex Mark Boland and T-Rex okay. do you know do you know them yeah. oh yeah he's <coughs> yeah I think he was more influential than we know although they've just done a massive album I think uh, was it Cosmic Dancer or something they've just done I know uh, or maybe Nick Cave has covered Cosmic Dancer and then a lot of people have covered T-Rex songs. It's just been out, oh, oh yeah, it's, it's named after that uh, beat poem, Angel-Headed Hipsters. Who wrote that? Is that Greenberg or? Uh, yeah, Ginsburg. Ginsburg it's, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a line from Ginsburg's, um, what was this the name of this? I think it's most famous poem, Angel-Headed Hipsters. But Angel Headed Hipster is the name of the new T Rex. Okay. They've just done. Nice. Everyone could, nobody asked me, of course. <sighs> so I said about that. So T Rex, yeah. It's half past nine? Yeah. Okay. Half. If you want to go for a little, no, that's 10 minutes or so, I don't mind. Guys, it's pretty good to you, sure. You yeah, won't be late. I mean, we're going to have to. Uh, is that all right? We just do 10 more minutes and I'll put the finishing touches on. Um, Thanks very much, Jerry. Oh, yeah, I appreciate welcome. that. Thanks, yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't, I, I'm, I'm enjoying myself. Oh, great. <coughs> so the last 10 minutes, everybody. you got 10 more minutes here. So T-Rex, who else? Anybody else who was really well, good? Like, the, the, I, guess, I guess a lot of the music that came out was CBGBs. You know, I love David Bowie, obviously. I Ramones, you like the Ramones? Yeah. I love the Ramones, yeah. yeah. But whoever came out of CBGBs, I mean, basically most of my musical taste nearly came from that one, that one uh, club, club in, yeah. in, in, in New York City, so in the Bowery, so it was like Blondie. Oh yeah, I was going to say Blondie. Yeah, yeah. Talking Heads, yeah. Um, Lou Reed, massive oh, gosh, Lou Reed. The Velvet Underground, I, mean, I guess yeah. the Velvet Underground would yeah. be my Beatles. Okay, no, I'm not, really? I'm not really, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't be a Beatles fan, but I would... Be oh, a you're not, really? underground fan. Wow. No, not really. I never kind of like. Maybe I grew up with punk. Kind of, I guess punk was around in my formative years, so I kind of the Beatles weren't really my bag, you know. Okay. Like a bit of the Stones. No, I do appreciate and like the Beatles. Yeah. But the Velvet Underground would be my Beatles, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so brilliant. Tom Waits would be my oh, Rolling yeah. Stones, sure, you know. Yeah. So I love Tom Waits. Okay. Massive yeah. Tom Waits fan. I guess that kind of genre, and I, I actually make a lot of uh, Hispanic. I like Hispanic music and rhythms. You know, oh, very good. Yeah. Calexico, great band. Calexico, Calexico. No, but um, I wouldn't be that. Uh, what about you, musical taste? Uh, I love classical. I love, uh, but I like a lot of the old rock and stuff. But um, I love jazz. I love. Yeah, I'm a big jazz fan yeah. too. Quite an eclectic taste, you know. Mm. Charles Mingus now would be a massive fan. Oh yeah, brilliant, yeah. Yeah. Um, Although they said, someone has said to me that he is the rock musician's jazz. He, okay, yeah, I can see that. Guy, yeah. yeah. But I've seen the Mingus big band. Oh, have you? Yeah, amazing. Nice. Yeah. yeah, Mingus, yeah, I love Mingus. And I love Mingus' philosophy as well, because he, he, he was a black man, but he had a Chinese kind of... Philosophy, did he? But no, he had it, he, I think he was part Chinese as oh, well, okay. so right. it was a kind of like he he felt kind of a little bit alone right. on a racist thing, on wow, a, you know, right. his race yeah, was, yeah. Was, was, was only one Mingus kind of thing. Sure, you know? yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I love Mingus' poetry as well. Mm, you know? okay. yeah. So, Jerry, there is a question for you from Claire Murphy, and she's asking if you're following any League of Ireland football team. I'm allergic to football. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, uh, 
I break out in a rash when that <laughs> football comes. I'm not not very. Uh, no, I'm not. I I grew up in London. I I, I went to see a lot of football teams, but uh, then I kind of came moved to Ireland. I, I kind of lost interest. So no, no, sorry. And um, but I I my friends are big Bowes fans, so I guess I'll have to back them up. Which end? This is. Uh, my friends are big Bowes fans. Oh, Bowes, okay. okay. Sorry, Claire. <laughs> There's actually a, a question that was asked by uh, her husband. Oh, no, I, I, yeah, he's probably seen me. <coughs> no, don't. Uh, what do they call it? A uh, uh, gentleman's game played by hooligans. <laughs> yes, I call it uh, 22 millionaires chasing the bag of wind. Yeah. And then uh, rugby is a hooligans game played by gentlemen. Yes. No, I'm not. I'd never. I don't know. I've never really. Uh, no music is my bag. So I'm told does everybody have to show their paintings at midnight tonight or it's I think yeah, midnight tonight or before tomorrow at twelve, is it? But it could be you could be right, it could be midnight tonight, yeah. And I don't don't you know, I told you don't don't let me make the the rules. <laughs> that's really what it's gonna be, Jerry, that's no, what's gonna be. <laughs> no, you really you really don't want me to make up the rules. <laughs> I've got a bendy rule book. <laughs> you have to consider your posture when you're painting? Oh gosh, yeah, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> no, just, uh, it must be as, as uncomfortable for the painter sometimes as the yeah. sitter. Absolutely, yeah. Do you prefer standing? Uh, sometimes I do, yeah. Um, if I'm standing, I usually have the model up on a, hoisted up on a platform, so that even though they're sitting, I'm eye level with them. Okay. But if they're seated, I prefer to be at their eye level again. So eye level is yeah. important. Yeah. For me anyway. But uh, well, I guess it's perspective as well. Isn't yeah, because I'd be eye kind of level. You, yeah. Yeah. But um. Um, I, I, I just got correction here. Yeah. I was we are in Sequoia National Park, not the Redwood. The Redwood. Sequoia yeah, it's a Sequoia. It, it, no, yeah. you're in Yosemite. Yes. Yeah. Yosemite National Park is where the Sequoia trees are. I've been there myself. It's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, 
camp because I, I think there's a massive queue to get into Yosemite. You can't camp in Yosemite. You no. It's a massive waiting be. list. But I camped just outside oh, right. on on, a, on Eel River near Mariposa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got the. <laughs> we did you camp? No, no, we did not. We actually made a very big mistake. And uh, normally, what I do when we go to state, we I try to go to America once a year, every year. And normally, when we go, I rent a like a powerful supercar or something really like weird to drive around. And that time when we went to the park, uh, I have a Dodge Challenger six liter. Okay. So on the full tank, I managed to go about halfway and I have to come back because I will run out of fuel because <laughs> it's all up the hill, down too the big, hill, yeah. all the hill, down the hill. Beautiful road, oh, follows the river, amazing, yeah. Amazing, and, it's, yeah. Uh, and the car is 33 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, so. It's not very eco. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But a lovely car to drive though. Sharon says, n Midnight tonight, no bendy rule book. Sorry. Oh, okay. okay. Um, Aylesbury Park. Aylesbury Ash Park. Ashbury Park. Oh, Ashbury Park, of course. Ashbury no, Park. Ashbury Park, that's where Bon Jovi's New Jersey, yeah. it took me three hours, but well, like, well done. Yeah. Four hours, 13 minutes. Ashbury Park, okay. Ashbury Park. That's, that's my clock, doesn't really work. I only live in there now. Uh, Ashbury Park, yeah, Ashbury very Park. famous. Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah. Stone Pony. And then there's another venue that we used to play there regularly. Wow. And I found it amazing that they had this boardwalk that was in this massive big hotel. Mm. Like beautiful, beautiful art deco kind of oh, wow. buildings. Yeah. Empty. Really? Completely yeah. derelict and empty. It was very the end of the world, you know? Ashby Park, yeah. I loved it playing there, playing it maybe three or four times. Oh. All right, maybe that's Sharon. Oh, Hi, Lucia. Oh, hi, Will. My wife there. Okay, hello. <laughs> Better answer the phone then. I'm here with Jerry Fish. <laughs> hello, oh, Lucia. Good. How are you? <laughs> oh, is that, Jer is that Jerry? It is me, yeah, it's me. <laughs> Oh, it's lovely to talk to you. But I think you're, you're, you better be told you're live across the world as well. I think they're streaming this thing. I'm live? Yeah. You're live. No, we're not. Well, I couldn't even see it. Well, could you I not? Even, no, I didn't. I was trying to type in stuff into the internet and I was getting nowhere. Really? Did okay. I have to register or something? No, you shouldn't have to register. Uh, don't know, but you're live across the ever for everyone else that can see it, Lucia, they're listening to they're you. They're listening to you. <laughs> what? No, they're not. Don't say that. Well, you have a lovely Dublin accent, so he did well, didn't he, the boy? He did well. <laughs> Where are you from, Jerry? Rings End. Where? Family from Rings End. Oh, Rings End. Oh, very nice. Yeah, very nice. Oh, lovely. <laughs> oh, my sister's living in um, East Wall. And nice, yeah. Finish, isn't it? Even nicer, the posh side, East Wall. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> and how did it go this evening, Trina? Still walking. Yeah, we're still, still working. Walking. Here. You actually I... are live. Yeah, you're you're live, babe. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, let me go then and get back to work. We're so on I'll, a, I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll call you in about ten minutes. Uh, okay. Right. All right. Bye. Bye oh guys, see ya. Bye. So, you need to make sure that people know that the images have to be sent tonight by midnight to enter the competition. Okay. So the email, I think it's, uh, the email to send your, your paintings on is um, Kildare, Kildare Portrait Comp, C-O-M-P, at gmail.com. So Kildare Portrait Comp, 
C-O-N-P at portrait at gmail dot com. Can you say it again? Then I put so, posted on the chat. Uh, Kildare. Yeah. Portrait. Comp. C-O-M-P. At gmail dot com. And your portraits will be uh, reviewed, and then um, you should be notified very soon. So. Uh, midnight tonight. Midnight tonight. Um, it's just kind of basically for anyone who's interested the background um, it's very different I'm kind of <laughs> what I've done here is because the light was changing so much <clears throat> if I had painted the background as as I saw it it would have darkened um, all the lights on Jerry's face so I was reluctant. So, if I had painted that, I would have had to rework all my lights. So, to compensate for that, I went and made the dark room much dark, the background much darker. So, by going darker, it brightened up um, his face. So, that was the um, my strategy there. I, 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 instead of having to repaint your whole face, I would have. So, mm -hmm. it just I've I've darkened the background to brighten your face. So that's mm -hmm. that's the reason for this. And I've just kind of I ran out of white paint. So. Uh, <laughs> You should have brought your magic white paint. That's right. <laughs> My Bob Ross paint, but I actually ran out about an hour ago, so I've been making do with my yellow. So anyway, so that's that. But anyway, uh, there's the carpenter blading his tools now. But, uh, yeah, so that's the reason behind this. And maybe when this dries or something, I'll, I'll redesign this. But basically, I just needed to get that dark against Jerry's face, and then I could maintain the flesh tones. So. Yeah, that's it. Um, are you okay for time, or is that? Uh, it's uh, almost ten o'clock. Almost ten o'clock. Okay. So thank so you very gosh, much. So, gosh, Jerry, it's thanks. been a pleasure. Yeah, we can't absolute, shake hands. Absolute pleasure. I appreciate it. Handshake. Listen, I just, I'd love to give you this painting. Just. Um, oh well, I would be honoured. Which, you, which you have? Okay. I can pass it down to my grandchildren. Brilliant. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. I'd love you to have it. So, uh, thank you so much for. for thank you. Your giving. Thank you, everybody, time. for being part of this. Yeah. Appreciate it. So thanks everybody. So anyway, yeah, well done. Sorry, thanks okay. for doing it. And God bless.